So, um, hello, dear colleagues. It's like actually 10 a.m. sharp, and we are going uh, to start. Yes, so I'm Valeria Kovac. So, I'm the host of this uh, workshop section today, and I'm representing State Institution Institute of Environmental Geochemistry of National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. And my co host today is also my colleague from the same institute, Andriy Yatsession. So uh, we are really glad to welcome you, yes, on the fourth International Conference on Sustainable Futures, Environmental, Technological, Social and Economic Matters. So um, today we are going to, um, here in this workshop, yes, will be presented the uh, reports uh, of the workshop Innovative Approaches for Solving Environmental Issues, yes, and uh, um, other uh, reports or speeches, yes, uh, on such direction, environmental pollution and sustainable development, environmental risk assessment and sustainable development, sustainable environment and environmental management. But just actually don't forget about timing, yes, so this speech is up to 10 minutes, yes, and uh, five minutes for questions and answers, yes, so, um, and really we want to uh, ask everyone uh, to, in case it is possible, yes, to ask questions uh, in English and also uh, to prepare answers in English as well. So uh, there is also an opportunity to ask questions through the chat. Yes, so please, uh, in case uh, you have questions, but you are facing some difficulties with your microphone or something, just leave it in the chat. And uh, also, while other speakers are going to present their speeches, yes, we really um, want to ask you just actually to um, mute your microphones. Yep. So uh, let's get it started then. And just actually for the welcome word, we would like to invite Alexander Popov, head deputy of the State Institution, Institute of Environmental Geochemistry of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. Please, Alexander, the floor is yours. Good morning, colleagues. It is very nice to be here з вітальним словом на такому, на такому важливому, цікавому та престижному заході, як міжнародний воркшоп «Інноваційні підходи вирішення екологічних проблем», який проводиться в рамках четвертої міжнародної конференції «Сталого майбутнього» і присвячений Дням науки в Україні. Uh, good day, dear colleagues. I am pleased to deliver a welcoming speech at such an important, exciting and prestigious event as an international workshop on innovative approaches for solving environmental issues, which is held as a part of fourth international conference on sustainable futures and uh, dedicated to the days of science in Ukraine. The uh, workshop is very і включає різні, різні аспекти вирішення екологічних проблем, починаючи з а, питань охорони навколишнього природного середовища і закінчуючи новими підходами у навчанні та підвищенні кваліфікації за різними екологічними спеціальностями. Uh, the workshop topic is vast and includes various aspects of solving environmental problems, starting with environmental protection issues and ending with the new approaches in education and professional development uh, for environmental specialists. Наш Інститут геохімії навколишнього середовища вже третій рік поспіль стає майданчиком для обміну досвідом, науковими результатами, контактами провідних науковців різних країн світу і тісно співпрацює, які займаються вирішенням актуальних проблем, пов'язаних так чи інакше з екологією. Uh, for the third year in a row, our Institute of Environmental Geochemistry has become a platform for exchanging experience, scientific results, um, and contacts of leading scientists from different countries um, in the world, yes, who are engaged in solving urgent problems related to, in one way or another to ecology. І це не дивно, оскільки наша установа є однією з провідних наукових організацій України, яка 
займається питаннями екологічної та радіаційної безпеки і має світове визнання та тісно співпрацює з відсутняними та закордонними науковими організаціями. And it is not surprising since our institution is one of the leading scientific institutions uh, in Ukraine, yes, in the field of environmental and radiation safety, which has world recognition and closely cooperates with many domestic and foreign scientific organizations. Зокрема, науковий відділ технологій захисту довкілля традиційної безпеки, які я очолюю, займається розробленням інформаційних технологій, екологічного моніторингу техногенних об'єктів, математичним моделюванням забруднення довкілля, вирішенням актуальних проблем цивільного захисту та екологічно безпечного і стійкого функціонування об'єктів атомної енергетики України. Uh, in particular, the scientific department of environmental protection and radiation safety technologies, which I am head of, yes, is engaged in the development of um, information technologies for en environmental monitoring of technogenic objects, mathematical modeling of ecological pollution, solving urgent problems of civil protection and ecologically safe and sustainable functioning of nuclear energy facilities in Ukraine. Запрошуємо до співпраці. So we invite interested parties for cooperation. Проте, на жаль, сьогодні для нашої країни дуже важкі часи. Весь український народ на всіх фронтах чинить проти російської агресії. So unfortunately today is a tough time for our country and the entire Ukrainian people, yes, are resisting Russian aggression on all fronts. І науковий фронт є дуже важливим в цій боротьбі, оскільки тільки науково обґрунтований підхід до вирішення різних актуальних проблем в різних сферах життєдіяльності суспільства може забезпечити як мінімум перемогу в даній війні, а як максимум швидке відновлення країни та стрімке економічне зростання. Uh, and uh, the scientific front is the critical in this struggle since only a scientifically based approach to solving various pressing problems in all spheres of society's lives in the condition of uh, martial law can ensure at least a victory in, in the war and uh, at most a quick recovery of the country and rapid economic growth. Я переконаний, що проведення таких зустрічей, як наш захід, активує діяльність та продовження наукових досліджень в умовах війни, а також формує потенціал для повоєнної відбудови країни. Holding such meetings as our event activates the activity and continuation of scientific research of scientists in war condition, yes, and forms the potential for the country's post-war uh, recovery and reconstruction. Я вірю, що даний воркшоп буде корисним кожному учаснику, дозволить збагатити свої знання про інноваційні підходи вирішення екологічних проблем і надихне на нові здобутки на науковій мірі. Um, this workshop will be helpful for every participant, will enrich knowledge about innovative approaches to solving environmental problems and uh, inspire new achievements in the scientific field. Дякую за увагу. Бажаю всім цікавих доповідей, полідної дискусії та гарного настрою. Thank you all for your attention. I wish everyone interesting reports, fruitful discussion and, of course, a good mood. Yes. So thank you very much, uh, Alexander, for like actually this welcoming world. And um, uh, we are going to continue with our first um, uh, speech. Yes, uh, it will be uh, Sergei Skoratyevsky, Yuri Zabulonov, Alexander Popov. Um, yep, so um, Stokola, Spuhach and Norbert Molitor. Uh, mathematical tools of solving the problem of restoring the surface distribution of radiation pollution based on the remote measurement data. Please, Sergei Skoratyevsky. Hello, everyone. And I am Sergei Skoratyevsky and would like to present the results of our research. 
at the Institute of Environmental Geochemistry of the NASA of Ukraine. The presentation's uh, topic is mathematical tools of solving the problem of restoring the surface distribution of radiation pollution based on remote measurement data. Uh, let's start from uh, the short introduction to the problem. Uh, at first, it should be noted uh, that to support the sus sustainable development of economies and human societies, the effective implementation of innovative technologies, method of rational nature management and safety components should be realized. This means uh, in turn to handling the radioactive materials which can provide significant benefits and uh, at the same time can cause substantial damage. To organize the effective control of radioactive materials accompanied by, the, by ensuring radio, radiation safety, the novel achievement, achievements in the field of remote sensing and information technologies can be useful. There are many ways for gathering and processing information on observed objects, including satellites, manned uh, aviation, ground observation. Among them, the small flying machine, so-called UAV, should be noted, the use of which has developed rapidly due to the advantages. That was uh, overviewed shortly in our paper from the last year conference. Nevertheless, uh, the collected data undergo the influence of different uh, effects, uh, for example, UAV velocity and altitude, detectors properties, attenuation, natural radiation, and require further processing and correction. To improve the quality of UV measurements, it is utilized the approach which is based on the use of a solution of inverse problems. This problem involves a multiple integral relation, approximation of which in turn causes well-known problem. However, the main obstacle relates to the construction of a solution to the inverse problem. Since we deal with the uh, ill post problems that produces strong instability over smoothing effect and so on. To overcome this difficulty, we use the Tikhonov and Landweber algorithms in these studies. Uh, so, uh, our research aim and objectives are as follows. We consider the adaptation of algorithm for the inverse problem, which arises during the remote monitoring of distributed radioactive fields and uh, the restoration of the gamma field distributed over the ground surface and, uh, and identification of its peculiarities are performed. Uh, we start from the uh, mathematical statement of the remote ground sensing, uh, which uh, involves the, the integral relation describing the attenuation of the gamma radiation with distance from the ground surface the distribution of radioactive uh, sources in the ground and the detector's properties. In the left panel you can see this simplified scheme of remote sensing. We introduce the reference frame X, Y and Z. Uh, we also uh, specify the level of ground uh, by function H. Point D marks the position of UAV, uh, which moves in the direction of uh, vector V. Uh, the region omega represents the uh, uh, window of view uh, from which the detector uh, mounted on uh, UAV uh, catch the hamaquants. So, the number of trapped gamma rays uh, at the moment t satisfies the integral relation 1, where function phi uh, incorporates the attenuation effect with parameter mu, and uh, fun function sigma uh, represents uh, the distribution of radioactive uh, element sources on the ground surface. Uh, uh, we start uh, the solution of this integral uh, equation from the forward problem. Uh, when we uh, have the function sigma, in our case uh, it represents uh, on the right panel and uh, incorporates uh, two uh, uh, peaks uh, uh, so, uh, solving the equation 1, we obtain the right-hand uh, 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 quantities uh, representing the synthetic detectors, detectors readings. 
the solution of forward problem uh, is shown in the uh, figure by blue point and we can see that uh, it uh, rather well uh, coincide with the theoretical uh, uh, function sigma uh, so, to develop the algorithm for the inverse problem solution, we discretize, discretize the initial integral relation 1 using the classical re rectangle method <coughs> and obtain the uh, algebraic system 2 uh, with respect to uh, quantities sigma. Uh, this uh, system can be written in the matrix form 3 and uh, uh, we solves uh, we solve this system with respect to quantities g uh, uh, since parameter where v w and matrix k are known matrix k uh, is multi diagonal and not square and uh, the system is uh, ill conditioning uh, therefore uh, to obtain the proper solution the tikhonov and landweber regularized algorithm are used uh, at first, we start from the Tikhonov uh, method. The exact solution of the system uh, 3 is approximated uh, by the relation, this relation, uh, which can be presented in the matrix form where parameter alpha is regularization parameter. To check out the algorithm work, we take the synthetic reading represented by forward uh, problem solution, prescribe parameter alpha and evaluate g alpha by 4. The result presented in figure 3 for two parameter alpha we can uh, see uh, uh, two peaks uh, separated uh, in this figure very well uh, in both cases. Uh, we also consider the uh, solution of inverse problem when the, some noise uh, was added into the uh, algebraic system. Uh, these uh, random variables uh, are represented by the normally distributed uh, quantities, uh, uh, as you can see on the right panel, for different standard deviations. In, uh, uh, in this uh, case, the solution of inverse problem uh, are presented on the left uh, panel and we can see that for small standard deviation uh, the solution of inverse problem is stable and uh, uh, the doublet structures, uh, these two peaks are separated very well. Uh, Landweber me method uh, also uh, is, uh, is also used in, in the studies. This technique is uh, iterative uh, procedure, procedure is defined by the relation five, uh, which can be presented in the matrix form six, where new uh, is, uh, coincides uh, with the number of iteration. Uh, the solution of the inverse problem uh, is presented in the left and the right panels uh, for small and large number of iteration we can see uh, that uh, the quality of uh, restoring function sigma uh, increases with the increases of uh, number of uh, iterations uh, so as a conclusion Mm, we, sh uh, we can say that the research outlined about dealt with the mathematical issues devoted to the remote sensing areas contaminated by the highly radioactive materials. Nowadays, the use of UAV for remote sensing grows rapidly, therefore support and assistance of UAV technology are extremely important. To do this, modern software and numerical methods are utilized. Using Mathematica package, the Tikhonov and Van Webel algorithms for the inverse problem were applied to the test problem. It turned out that the algorithms for the inverse problem reconstruct the closed doublet structures quite well, remaining then separated. Presented studies uh, can be useful for organizing the monitoring of the territories uh, with man-made radioactive waste, for example, the Chernobyl inclusion uh, zone or Fukushima uh, zone. Uh, we also um, uh, believe that uh, these studies uh, 
would be interesting for the uh, experts in the field of remote sensing of radiation, homeland security, ecology, nuclear medicine, etc. So that's all. Thanks for attention. Thank you for your attention. So, uh, dear colleagues, um, any questions? Because the whole group, uh, yes, that was preparing this uh, article and this speech is here. So, in case that anyone has something, um, just actually, in case you don't mind, I want to ask one. Yes. So, uh, other parameters that you used, yes, uh, in in the preparation, they are only, uh, let's say. Mm, model yes or like actually you were taking some real experimental mm -hmm. results thanks for the question um, i can say that uh, uh, some part of uh, parameters uh, was uh, taken from field experiment for example uh, uh, the uh, velocity of UAV, uh, altitude of uh, UAV, um, uh, coefficient of attenuation of uh, gamma rays in the air, uh, these uh, quantities, these parameters uh, uh, is, are, are typical for uh, field experiments. Uh, Whereas uh, the distribution uh, of uh, radioactive sources. Uh, uh, <laughs> is chosen uh, uh, model uh, as model uh, without uh, um, uh, relate relations to uh, real distribution because uh, we consider uh, qualitative uh, behavior of uh, uh, numerical procedures and uh, also we consider the possibility to uh, uh, restore the uh, doublet structures uh, close to each other therefore in this situation it's better to use uh, some theoretical uh, uh, distribution okay okay thank you very much just actually we know that it's quite hard and important work yes and mm -hmm. due to the circumstances you will have a lot of things to do in the zone i think yep mm -hmm. so any other maybe question comments don't forget about timing uh, i have one question uh just hold a second like also norbert has uh, some okay. comments no, go, go or questions yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would just uh, like to to point out that uh, together with the institute, we have also performed some practical examples some years ago, and um, this is uh, very intensively followed by the international community. And I believe that uh, we have also quite good uh, uh, real data. So it means not theoretical data, which we can process. So, but we will continue this work. I think in the next step. I mm, saw. Uh, uh, yep. Um, so hopefully that it will be in a such uh, way. Yep. So any other questions, comments, anything? Uh, I have one. Okay. Um, in what uh, direction uh, is it planned uh, to develop uh, the uh, presented uh, research? Mm -hmm. Uh, we plan, uh, we will plan to continue our consideration uh, in different uh, directions. Uh, for example, it would be interesting uh, to consider the two-dimensional distribution of radioactive sources uh, on the in in uh, ground. Uh, also, uh, it would be interesting to include uh, the distribution of radioactive elements. Uh, uh, our uh, the depths uh, because uh, there are many considerations in this direction uh, also interesting problem arises uh, when we consider the optimal uh, velocity of uav uh, which should be chosen or specified in order to uh, uh, reduce the over smoothing of uh, obtaining uh, inverse problem solution 
uh, or uh, on uh, other hand uh, uh, reduce the uh, increasing of uh, stochastic uh, uh, oscillation uh, on the trajectory of uh, of restoring uh, uh, profile uh, if i think uh, this uh, three uh, complex problems uh, will be considered uh, in the nearest future thanks for the question okay so like actually it's very optimistic yes and uh, we see from the like actually group yeah so your authors yes uh, so that you have perspectives you know where you're going we just uh, from our side can wish you success yes and to receive funding yes to to proceed with your uh researches further thanks thanks many thanks yes okay thank you very much for your presentation let's move further dear colleagues so the next uh, presentation is Johan Polipchuk uh it's um speech yes about development of a conceptual scheme for the creation of environmentally friendly gadolini containing neutron absorbing nanocomposites you're welcome Hello, dear colleagues. This is Yevgen Pilipchuk, and uh, I represent the Institute of Environmental Geochemistry of National Academy of Science of Ukraine. And the topic of my presentation is develop of a conceptual scheme for the creation of environmentally friendly gadolinium containing neutron absorbing nanocomposites, and also their valid validation with gadolinium containing cartesian films. So this project is carried out in frameworks of a project funded by National Academy of Science. And this is a project for young uh, researchers. And the title of the project you can see here. And this project involves two stages. Now we're in stage two, which has started in January this year. And this stage requires development of synthesis technologies for gadolini containing nanocomposite materials. So in this, uh, stage two we have several tasks and now uh, i am presenting you the material which is directly related to tasks five six and seven and basically this means that uh, we need to develop conceptual scheme for creation of such composites then develop bio compatible materials based on gadolinium and biopolymers and then we also need to optimize the synthesis parameters of such materials so before I go directly to our presentation, I also would like to briefly remind you why it's important and why we are doing this. So you know that there is a big need in improving uh, shielding from different radiation sources, including neutron radiation. And for example, in this picture, you see the neutron uh, shielding door, which is uh, packed with this uh, polyethylene bricks, which contain boron. and uh, there are some positive things about this because uh, this boron and polyethylene bricks have affordable price, they are lightweight and they are available at large scale. However, there are also some problems, basically uh, including sustainability, recyclability and also efficiency per mass. Because there are some different isotopes, for example, you can see from this table, which has uh, much higher neutron uh, capture cross-section for example like cadmium and gadolinium you see their cross-section much higher than for example for instance for boron and this all require us developing new materials for uh, protection from different neutron sources so we have analyzed different literature sources and uh, recent achievements uh, for the creation of gadolinium containing materials for neutron protection and uh, according to our uh, literature analysis we have developed this con conceptual scheme for the creation of uh, gadolinium containing uh, composite materials so in this case we su suggest a four layer scheme uh, for for the composite material which contains uh, outer layer number one which contains radiation resistant bindi layer number two neutron shielding layer which actually contains gadolinium and then base on which this layer is deposited uh, 
and I can also briefly comment about this layer. So if, for example, outer layer will be interacting with, uh, with nat uh, natural conditions, for example, like rain or sun, it definitely should contain different uh, special paints which are uh, resistant to such conditions. Uh, and uh, we can also say that the main uh, parameters and uh, optimal uh, materials for this layer are already developed. However, if we need uh, to develop a radiation resistant uh, layer and also neutron shielding layer, this is a bit more complicated. I will talk about this in next slide. And then uh, as a base, we can, for example, use wood because it has also nice radiation uh, shielding properties and uh, very good construction properties. So uh, now I will go to development of uh, radiation stable layer and also neutron absorbing layer which are layers number two and number three if you remember from previous slide so here we need to remember what is happening when neutrons are interacting with material uh, for example gadolinium containing material uh, we can definitely see that uh, while gadolinium azide isotopes interacting with neutrons uh, they provide uh, some amount of gamma quants uh, with high energy and also they produce a big number of uh, uh, Auger and internal conver conversion electrons which also have uh, high energy. This means that when we have a neutron easily penetrating this layer number one then in basically in layer number two and three it creates these uh, high energetic particles which can destroy the, the, the material inside it and then this means that we have to have material which is stable to gamma quants and also to internal conversion electrons and energy electrons that's why we think that um, this layer should have some uh, distinct thickness for example for radiation stable uh, stable layer number two we suppose the thickness should be between one millimeter and one centimeter and uh, then gadolinium containing layer can be up to two centimeters depending on the parameters for neutron shielding. For example, you can see from table one, uh, <coughs> we have different penetration uh, depths of, of beta particles, which uh, interact with different substances, for instance, air, water, aluminum, and lead. And you can see that, for example, if you have matter layer, it definitely absorbs much better beta particles than um, like water or air. And uh, here we present in one uh, short, uh, sh very brief example of such a material. Uh, for example, we have synthesized this biopolymer film, which is uh, based on chitosan. It's polymer from shrimp shells. And you can see this film is transparent. And also it has uh, gadolinium inside. We, hint, we have synthesized a uh, series of this film with variety concentration of gadolinium and also without it. And we investigated their thickness. So for example, you see the film without gadolinium has thickness approximately nine micron and gadolinium containing film has thickness approximately 15 micron. And uh, here we just showing electron microscopy images of this of cross section of this film. Uh, combined with also elemental analysis. So for example, here you see we don't have any gadolinium here, otherwise it would be green, but we have gadolinium in, uh, in the gadolinium containing film, of course. Uh, but this image just shows us that like we successfully incorporated gadolinium into our material. And also we can see the thickness of such a material. And then we tested uh, such a material in uh, radiation stability test. Basically, we radiated uh, such a film with beta particles. Uh, their energy was, uh, the voltage we applied was 15 kilovolt. And you can see that, for example, no, no gadolinium containing film has been destroyed while we were, were irradiating it with um, beta particles. You see like these rings, which definitely can confirm that the material was uh, destroyed and evaporated during interaction with electrons. However, when we have gadolinium containing film, you can see that, yeah, it still keeps its porous structure, but we don't, say, don't have such a severe damage to the 
biopolymer structures we have in case without gadolinium. So here we can conclude that incorporation of gadolinium increased radiation uh, stability of the material. And in the last, last stage, we estimated neutral shielding capacity of such materials. So we estimated how thickness of such, such a film and also gadolinium content increase or decrease uh, permeability of neutrons. And you can see that, for example, while we increase thickness of this film and also while we increase gadolinium content, content we, in, uh, we increase thermal neutron permeability. So for example, at 5-8% gadolinium and approximately 20 micron thickness, we can block uh, roughly 90% of thermal neutrons penetrating through such a material. So we can say that uh, such a material, which is very thin, can already block thermal neutrons and also has uh, stability in the beta particle irradiation test. And here we can conclude that we have developed the scheme for creation of such environmentally safe gadolinium containing uh, materials. Uh, we can say that this uh, scheme was validated using uh, biopolymer films. And we can say that uh, high gadolinium load in, in such film was demonstrated. And also we can uh, conclude that these films uh, exhibit improved radiation stability. Uh, for the future plans, we can say that uh, <coughs> The video. Huh? Yes. Just. I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would be glad to answer all your questions. Okay, thank you very much. But colleagues from Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, <laughs> um, yes, Mr. Igor, you every time switch on your microphone and just it interferes a bit. Okay, thank you very much, um, Give hand. So uh, any other questions, please, who has some questions? Um, okay, Anastasia, you're welcome. I have two questions. So first question, do you plan to perform real life testing of your films under thermal neutron radiation? Uh, thank you, Anastasia. Uh, a very good question. Uh, yes, we, we plan. We plan to do real testing. We want uh, to see how material behaves in the real world. So we want to see, for instance, uh, uh, UV stability or just stability uh, of the film exposed to light and we also want to see how this material is stable under for example raining conditions okay, okay. Uh, and uh, second question <laughs> okay uh, um, what uh, maximum gadolinium concentration you can achieve in your films mm -hmm. uh, thanks uh, so in, in this material, uh, I mean, uh, when we synthesize the Skypezone films, we could achieve maximum 8% uh, mass loading of gadolinium. Otherwise, if we increase it more, then material become, becomes unstable and basically it becomes very brittle. So mm -hmm. I think I can say that 8% is maximum concentration we can achieve so far. Thank okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Please, comments, questions. I have one. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, what are uh, your plans uh, on show uh, on uh, how uh, to improve the properties uh, of the film? Uh, for instance, uh, mechanical properties. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andre. It's also a good question. Because I, as I mentioned, for example, when I was just answering to Anastasia that uh, uh, that um, the, the sample when it has high gadolinium content uh, become brit becomes brittle and also stiff. And this means that we need to add some kind of plasticizer uh, to make it more flexible. So we, are, we are thinking about this now, but probably we will be using some bio-based oils and also probably some lignin, which is known uh, to improve mechanical properties of the materials. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Any other questions, comments, anything? 
Okay, if not, so but before we are going to start uh, the presentation, yes, uh, we uh, like our colleagues are in Chernobyl exclusion zone and they want to tell us a few words up front. So, um, Mr. Igor Skeeter, you are welcome. Tell us a few words. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, dear colleagues, dear Norbert, hello. Uh, it's our team. Uh, uh, we are a research uh, in our uh, presentation. Dear colleagues, dear participants of the conference, the uh, team from the Institute of Safety Problem is greeting you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. And, and the robot <laughs> dog is also <laughs> greeting us. <laughs> yeah, uh, really. Uh, so, uh, say, uh, thank you for this conference, and uh, we are really pleased to be a part of the, uh, your, your conference and to have a chance to make our joint uh, joint report. So, I give a floor to Igor. Igor, uh, please uh, start the report. <laughs> so, thank you, and uh, warm greetings to everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you are showing us innovations. Yes. And thank you for your work uh, in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Thank you, dear colleagues. So now we will give a floor to, uh, yes, to Mr. Igor Skeeter. Yes, it's a selection of the optimal options for the transformation of the shelter objects into an environmentally safe system using the factor uh, criterion model of scenario analysis. Yes, you're welcome. Colleagues, I am pleased to present to your attention the result of a study on selection of the optimal option for the transformation of the shelter object into an environmentally safe system using the factor criterion model of scenario analysis. The study was performed by a team of authors from the Institutes of Safety Problem of Nuclear Power and Plants, Strategic Consulting Company Players, and the Institute of Mathematical Machine and System of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine. The content of my report is as follows. Brief description to research object, description of the subject of the research, new safe confinement and task for their removal, model for cooperative analysis of scenario of the shelter object transformation, result and conclusion. So, the object of our research is a complex shelter object, new safe confinement. The transformation of the objects of study is shown on the slide. After the accident at the fourth block of Chernobyl NPP, the so-called sarcophagus, the shelter object, was constructed. After the critical period of its operation was reached in 2007-2016, a unique structure was created, ARC, over the shelter. In 2016, the ARC was successfully slid over on the shelter, and the new safe confinement system was finally accepted for operation in 2019. After the accident for the uh, unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, a huge amount of radioactive and fuel contained material was generated. No doubt, over the past uh, 70, 37 years, various factors have degraded fuel contained materials and destroyed structure. An example of the degradation of basic material is shown on the slide. Brown ceramics and its degradation, black ceramics at its degradation, so-called elephant food and its degradation. Thus accumulation of full contained materials continue to be the main source of the hazard on the shelter. Moreover, it increases over time as a result of spontaneous destruction of the surface of power-like fissions with the formation of high-level dust. This is a radiological hazard not only of a local but also of a global nature since the new safe confinement is not a sheltered structure. Therefore, it is 
extremely important to remove of transfer CCMs to a controlled state before the process of their destruction can become large scale. <clears throat> to ensure um, nuclear and, and radiation safety of the facility, it is necessary to remove radioactive material and fuel. Currently, the new safe confinement system is considered in the technological space of interconnected retrieval zones. At the same time, each zone has its own technological scenarios for the radioactive material retrieval using different technology. Zone 1 – Central Hall. Zone 2 – Subapparatus Room. Zone 3 – Stream distribution corridor, zone four, machine room, zone five, <coughs> space behind the perennial walls, six, rubble under cascade wall, and zone seven, so local zone after new safe confinement. <coughs> is currently considering three strategies for material removal and 10 scenarios for the implementation presented on the slide. Selecting scenarios and organizing them is difficult. The decision-making process is influenced by a large number of both internal and external factors. To build a model for comparative analysis of scenario, 11 indicators were selected to be taken into account when selecting scenarios. They were selected based on the recommendation of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Ukrainian legislation and expert of the field of radiation safety. <clears throat> At the stage of preparing of the data for building the model, they are grouped security factor with its own criteria, financial factor and infrastructure, component and its criteria. And introduce the concept of scenario value, signification function of the three constituent factors with their own criteria. The process of comparative analysis of scenario can be implemented on the basic of a three-level model. Level 1 – determination of factor and their criterion content. Level 2 – assessment of factor weight and criteria weight for them and level three determination of the complex value of the scenarios this will allow them to be ranked by value it should be noted that to determine the importance of the factors and their criteria a group expert assessment was used on a zero nine rating scale at the first stage the weight of the factor are determined based on expert opinion using a similar scheme to hierarchy analysis methods. Result is a vector of factor weights. At the second stage, according to the similar scheme, the weights of the criteria for each group of factor are determined of the basic of pairwise comparison matrix. Results, weight of criteria, and the sec uh, and the next stage, a vector of complex indicator is formed, which contain estimate of weight of the criteria and estimate of the weight of the relevant factor. <coughs> And on its basis, a vector, a complex weight, values of scenarios is determined using the geometric mean weighting formula. The result is the ranking of scenarios by value from argmax to argmin. The following slide demonstrates the practical implementation of the model based on a peer review of the factors and, cri and criteria, evaluation of the factor weights, 
Assessment of the weighting coefficient of the factor criteria. And comprehensive assessment of scenarios and their ranking. And finally, conclusion. The expert assessment of the factors and their criteria are competent and consistent. The calculated factor weights of the criteria for the scenarios based on the comparison matrix are reliable and significant. The vector of the relative comprehensive assessment of the scenario is the basis for making management decision. According to the Argman's principle, the best scenario is the scenario 1. The worst scenario, according to principle Gmin, is scenario 2. Thus, with proper financing of the work of the physicists, Petri uh, retrieval of solid waste, the priority of the baseline scenario, scenario one, retrieval of all solid waste accumulation during the new safe confinement life cycle. In this case, the new safe confinement infrastructure is used as efficiently as possible and the cost of creating protective barriers for radioactive materials and other infrastructure costs are reduced. The direction of Fasia research is application a uh, multi-criteria optimization technique and multi-factor multi-criteria analysis. But here there are great difficulties with the definition of the criteria of the financial factors. Thank you for attention and uh, Please ask your question in the chat. I am currently in the city of Chernobyl and our internet connection is very unstable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Anyway, like actually, um, Mr. Igor Skitter is uh, available, yes, online, but as he mentioned about his connection, I, ha I can see already, yes, two questions yes that were asked in the chat yeah so um the first one was why didn't you use the well-known multi-criteria optimization method and its modifications yeah and um the answer shall i read the answer so everyone can uh, see it in the chat yes that's why uh, it was pointed there or in what way? Yes, yes, Mr. Igor. Yep. Yes, pro <laughs> yes, problem. Uh, uh, one, uh, answer the one question. The new safe confinement uh, shelter of the complex is only one on the world. And today there are only a recommended direction for uh, turing such an object into an environmentally uh, friendly system. Therefore, we are pioneers in the formalization of this process. And uh, our Japanese colleagues from Fukushima have uh, already shown interest in many of our developments. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, there was uh, one more question there. Why was it necessary to build such a model? Yes, and could we have used ready-made recommendations? Yes, from um, IAE agencies. It is in the chat. In the chat. Yes. And they have very bad connection in, in the fact we are interfering every time with interruptions, so. Excuse me, excuse me, I don't hear, I don't see. Uh, unstable, very unstable. Excuse me. No, everything is okay. So, Valeria. Okay, like actually we have a question. Yes, so uh, hopefully our colleagues will see it later a little bit and they will uh, make uh, a response. Yes, yes. 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 Okay. So, thank you very much. Excuse me uh, for. No. 
Every, everything is okay. So, like, actually, we will um, text you question once again, and after that, uh, you will, after your reply, yes, we will put it here uh, in the chat. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, let's move further. Yes. So uh, we have uh, Pavlo Kuznetsov with the formation of the carbonate system of circulating cooling water of the Rivne and PP and its influence on changes in the surface water pH levels uh, of the Stiv River. So you're welcome. I am Pavlo Kuznetsov, postgraduate of the nation University of Water and Environmental Engineering, Specialty Ecology and at the same time work General Specialist of Chemistry in a nuclear power plant. I am presenting a report on the topic formation of the carbonate system of circulating cooling water of the Rivne NPP and its influence of changes in the surface water pH levels of the Steer River. Components of carbonate system are main constituent of natural water and shape the ability to neutralization acid and alkalinity. Each form exists in a pH interval the presence of one or another form in the carbonate system components determines one or another value water pH. Dissolved carbon dioxide interacts with water and forms bicarbonate and carbonate ions. My report presents research results on carbonate components of water circulating cooling system CCS of Rivne NPP and its influence of natural water steer river. Object study is CCS Rivne NPP. Rivne NPP have four power units installed power 2835 megawatts. CCS includes water treatment in which they carry out the following climbing and stabilization treatment phosphonate and sulfuric acid. Liming during water treatment is performed due to the displacement carbon equilibrium of the source water and pH value rises to 8.8 .8 9.8. Treatment with sulfuric acid of makeup water is carried out during regulation of 7.5 to 7.8. Experimental studies were carried out use the test bench with which operating conditions of CCS were modeled in particular evaporation and concentration and air aeration. Dynamic of pH changes during the concentration and aeration of cooling water samples with and without treatment by sulfuric acid show in diagram. During evaporation sample treated with liming and sulfuric acid and increase in pH is observed and decided without sulfuric acid. Increase and decrease in the pH is caused a shift in the equilibrium of the components of the carbonate system with formation of calcium carbonate. During air aeration for sample treatment with liming a decrease in pH is observed which is accompanied by a shift in the carbonate balance due to carbon dioxide neutralization with the formation of bicarbonate. 
for treatment with limic and sulfuric acid an increase in pH is observed which is accompanied by a shift in the carbonate balance due to the absorption of carbon dioxide and formation of bicarbonate. Coefficient fee which is calculated by chloride and C which calculated by total handiness characterized it the process of skull formation in CCS. The value of the difference coefficients which should not exist 0.2. The normalized value of the difference coefficients when used only liming is provided when phi is less than 3. When used liming and sulfuric acid phi is less than 4. Neutralization of alkalinity with sulfuric acid is advisable when coefficients are more than 3. Since 2017 the use of sulfuric acid, acid uh, for the treatment of CCS and its use at phi less than 3. According to visual control deterioration of the condition equipment was not recorded. The indicator characterizing formation of skull, the difference between coefficients concentration for 2012 to 2021 20, are comparable changing dosing model of sulfuric acid did not to deterioration in the efficiency of the equipment. During water treatment by liming, pH value increased to 9.4 to 9.8. Within the work of RIMNA and PP CCS during the period of our research, the we period of reaches with make up cooling water neutralized or not neutralized with sulfuric acid. Regardless of the method of treatment, the stabilization of the pH values cooling water is observed in the range 8.3 to 8.7. The discharge of return water with pH value 8.3 to 8.7 of the RIMNA NPP does not affect it the pH value of water in steel river. Because the rules are followed for fisheries, reserves should value 6.5 to 8.5. The conclusions of uh, the research are shown on the slide and implementation in the practice of RIMNA NPP. Thank for attention. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. Yes. And um, any questions in case somebody have? Uh, um, okay, there is one in the chat already. Yes, it is mine, if you don't mind. Is it possible to apply the approach proposed in the work? Yes, that have we seen right now for other NPPs. And in case your answer is yes, so please tell us what should be done for that. Pablo. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, please, maybe some uh, someone can translate the questions into Ukrainian. If maybe. 
Окей. Чи можна застосувати оцей от метод, да, запропонований от ваш підхід да, у роботі до технологічних вод інших АЕС? І якщо ваша відповідь буде так, то що потрібно для цього зробити? In Ukrainian, uh, maybe. Uh, in Ukrainian, we will help. Да, вот українською, давайте. На рівні з КАЕС, по суті, унікальна система циркуляційного, uh, циркуляційна система охолодження. І, uh, so, right now, uh, NPP, yes, is having quite a unique cooling system, yes. І використовуються споруди очищення води, і немає акумулюючого водойміща. Yeah, so they are using the facilities for wastewater treatment, yes, and they don't have uh, like reservoirs. На Запорізькій АЕС, на Хмельницькій АЕС, на Південній Українській АЕС є водойміще. Uh, і uh, безпосередньо вода забирається і скидається з цього водоймища без водопідготовки. So like actually on other NPPs, yes, yeah, there are reservoirs that water is taken and after that discharge into it without uh, water preparation, yes, uh, process. Uh, аналогічні uh, проектні рішення uh, щодо циркуляційної системи реалізовані uh, на АЕС Козладу і Болгарія і Словакія, Моховці. So the same solutions, yes, are uh, also uh, for a scene in, for NPPs in Bulgaria and Slovakia. І ці саме рішення можуть бути реалізовані на цих двох станціях європейських. Uh -huh. uh, ці рішення, про які ви говорили, правильно ці? Okay. That's the yes. So, and the approach that we mentioned here in the presentation, yes, uh, can be also um, applied uh, on those two NPPs. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But you have. Um, in which laboratory did you perform the research? In which laboratory did you perform the research? Це були стендові випробування, проводились безпосередньо на Рівненської АЕС. So, like actually, uh, it was like everything was done at Рівнен ПП directly, yes, in their facilities, okay. І основне, можна ще доповнити? Окей, да. Основне, до 2017 року, використовувалися саме серчана кислота для е, е, нормалізації значень pH. Тобто Є, yeah, є, yeah, uh, before риска розказуєте. Uh, uh -huh. uh, тобто uh, дозувалася серчана кислота, щоб забезпечити нормований показник на скиді 6,5-8,5. Оскільки це циркуляційна система і там є концентрування pH був більше 8,5 і використовувалися значні обсяги серчаної кислоти. І so саме before 2017, yes, like actually a huge amount of sulfuric acid we used, yes, in the preparation, yes, they were um, більше ніж 6,5, ви сказали, так, до 2000. Більше 8,5. Норма, ah, so... uh, норма 6,5, 8,5. Mm -hmm. So as uh, in case uh, the um, norm was 6,5 pH, yes, it was and uh, at that moment before 2017 it was 8.5 the uh, content so of ми, sulfuric acid ми нормалізували один показник pH і збільшували саме надходження сульфатів навколишнє середовище so like actually they managed to normalize one of the characteristics of pH yes and uh, they normalized the income of sulfates uh, of phosphates yes uh, into the uh, in this system і саме ці дослідження дозволили обґрунтувати необхідність не застосування серчаної кислоти, а скиду саме вод з pH більше 8,5. 
So like actually uh, on uh, these uh, uh, like researches, yes, they help to uh, prove that um, shouldn't be used uh, a sulfuric acid, yes, um, but um, the discharges of water, it's better to apply in this case. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So um, you have other questions, but if you don't mind, you might answer them directly into the chat, okay? Because like actually okay. we have, <laughs> like we're okay. we are up to time, but we a little bit, yes, not to start with questions here. So thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, and thank uh, you. yes, and let's move further. So our uh, next presentation is Irina Yepifanova, so neutral uh, network model of investment process of biogas production. So you're welcome. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Let me introduce our paper. Uh, its name is Natural Work Network Model of Investment Process of Biogas Production. And the authors are Vyacheslav Chachula and Irina Yipifanova, Vinica National Technical University. So, in today's world of economics, humanity faces several important issues related to sustainable development, among which uh, the important goals are to increase the production of energy from renewable sources around the world and ecological production. Permanent increase in energy prices causes a constant increase in production costs and reduces profits. One of the ways to ensure energy saving measures is to use biogas as an alternative energy source. And biogas plants are becoming widespread in the world. Also, natural climatic conditions are not favorable for biogas production. But modern technological solutions for insulation uh, of the reactors, the automatization and thermal stabilization allow us to obtain bare gas in different uh, latitudes. Bear gas plant is a complex set of interconnected technological elements of the process of utilization of organic waste with the processing into bear gas and biofertilized. The central element of the biogas plant is a bear reactor that is an insulated tank with heating element stereo devices for, the, uh, for loading the sustained and removing it, dash holder process control devices. The process of aerobic fermentation takes place in a B reactor, but before the raw material enters the reactor, it must go a long way of collection and preparation. First of all, organic may, uh, waste must be delivered to the site, then crushed and mixed with water, uh, had at a certain temperature to the reactor. And beer gas yield and methane contacts when using different types of waste is shown in table one. And the decision to implement a biogas plant must be made taking into account a large number of influencing factors. Significant cost of installation requires a careful analysis of all risks and features of the technological process. In addition to the complex technological requirements of the process of aerobic fermentation related to the uh, quality of raw materials, temperature and humidity of the substrate, uh, 
There are a number of human factors related uh, to qualifications, motivation and other factors. In general, we propose to determine the degree of feasibility of implementing a biogas plant by the values of uh, investment attractiveness. And uh, for this indicator, we have proposed ranges of values of factors in which it occurs a setting content saturation. And the investment attractiveness of the production of biogas proposal plant in the form as a ratio one, <coughs> where X is a set of financial and economic factors, uh, Y is a set of technological factors, and Z is a set of operational factors. And in turn, the above sets of factors can be um, deployed in the following dependencies, as you can see at this slide. And detailed characteristics of factors influencing the investment process, this uh, universal set of uh, variations and linguistic terms for allocation are given in the table. To develop a mathematical model of intellectual support for decision making or to assess the investment attractiveness of a biogas plant project, there is a need to form a knowledge matrix, concentrated coded information determined by technological calculations, expert valuations, analytical calculations. The knowledge matrix is a table where the numerical value shows the results of various types of research and the fragment of the knowledge matrix is given below. Uh, to build a neural network uh, with that would solve the problem with more accuracy, we propose to use a shadow neural network, the block diagram in which, uh, of which is shown in figure 1. A two-way network of direct feed with hidden sigmoid neurons and neurons in, of linear output can quite successfully solve the problem without excessive uh, occurrence and complexity of calculations. And for practical use of the proposed model, it is the best to create a simulink model in the MATLAB package. This model has only three blocks, uh, the constant block where the input values are entered in the form of a vector, the block of neural network and the realization uh, block, uh, in our case the monitor, where the simulation result is shown as a number, figure 4. And the decision making of the uh, feasibility of investing in the um, construction of the biogas plant is as show, uh, follows, analytically, expertly or experimentally. The input values are entered into the table. Then their values are loaded into the vector column of the program. According to the simulation results, it is determined that uh, the investment attractiveness of the introduction of the um, beer gas plant with a given set of output factor will be 7.54, which corresponds to the uh, range above average, so the plant can be implemented. Thus, the paper proposed a natural network model of the investment process of biogas production. The proposed model, in contrast to existing approaches, allows us to take into account both quantitative and quality factors that are obtained uh, analytically, expertly and experimentally. In addition, the proposed model allows us to combine both economic and technical criteria that affect the decision-making process for investing in the process of biogas production.
the calculation of investment attractiveness uh, or to the simulation results, it is determined uh, that the investment attractiveness of the production of a biogas plant for a given set of input factors indicates the feasibility of implementing uh, a biogas plant. Thank you for your attention and uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation and for the research. Please, dear colleagues, any questions? I have a question. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have uh, a question. Um, have you implemented uh, this model in any facility or region? Uh, if so, set result uh, did, did you get? Uh, okay, thank you for your question. And this uh, model uh, for today is uh, more theoretical, uh, but uh, we uh, in our plans, uh, we want to implement it in our region, it's Vinza region. And as you know, uh, Vinza region is agricultural uh, region, so there are a lot of uh, forms where uh, it uh, really can be implemented. And also my so-other, um, Vyacheslav Zhuzula, he's a doctor of economic, uh, but he's a PhD in technical. And in uh, his um, earlier uh, research, uh, he, um, um, he researched the problems uh, dealt with biogas. He even uh, created uh, for his dissertation uh, uh, such con uh, bio uh, biogas construction uh, for uh, uh, experimental part. Uh, that's why we decided uh, to continue uh, such research because uh, for today it's uh, very important to use different alternative uh, energies, uh, especially in our country, because uh, as you see, we have uh, many problems uh, with electricity and so on. Uh, as it's why um, we decided uh, to continue uh, to our research in this field, but more in an uh, economic uh, way for today. Okay, uh, just actually, can I ask just one question, if you don't yeah, mind? Course. Yeah, um, you know that, um, like uh, it, uh, it is very interesting for me because now everyone is crazy and obsessed about GPT chats. Yes, and everyone is trying to do everything almost uh, using the artificial intelligence. So I have a question for you. Have you tried using GPT chat? Yes. To build such models, or at least you were asking, you know, uh, some questions uh, from GPT chat. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you for your question. No, when we uh, built this model, we uh, didn't use uh, GPT chat uh, because we have uh, um, uh, some publications in this field and we use a Simulink model and also we interviewed uh, the respondents. Uh, but um, my husband, uh, for fun, uh, decided to try to work in GPT chat and uh, he uh, was uh, not uh, very happy for the results because uh, um, uh, he had to uh, type uh, very much information but the results uh, were awful and don't very nice and also uh, our, we have technical university so we have the faculty with information secu uh, information security so i sp uh, speak with my students and ask uh, can uh, they uh, make uh, their coursework 
in GPT chat. Uh, so they said it's uh, possible, but they need uh, to have a lot of time because this chat makes uh, many mistakes and it's uh, very important uh, to uh, ask uh, um, the question in, uh, in some direction because if it will be not a, a right question, so uh, this chat will give a, a bad answer. So there are a lot of work and it's easy uh, to do it in our usual way. Oh, it's it's good that we still, you know, like actually science is in need, yes, and education is in need. So yes. uh, we, um, because like nowadays, not everything uh, can be substituted by this chat. And also, um, I have uh, another question, um, if it is possible, uh, have you con compared just actually your obtained model, yes, with... Um, I mean, it's results, yes, with uh, the results that were obtained by other authors, because uh, biogas is a very popular topic, yes, and um, a lot of companies um, about it and into it. So in case, yes, so what was the difference? Uh, we, uh, when uh, we studied the literature, I really I uh, found a lot of materials about uh, uh, biogas, but I uh, didn't find uh, the uh, this, uh, the same um, research in uh, uh, that will be connected with investment process uh, that uh, decided in this way. So I can't uh, answer because I, I didn't find such uh, in, in such a term. OK, great. So we wish you success in it because it's Thank very you. important uh, topic. Yeah. So to develop it. Yes. And uh, succeed in it, of course. Okay. Thank yes. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your presentation. It was very nice. Let's move further, dear colleagues. So now it is Natalia Shirstuk, uh, assessment of environmental risk of water bodies in the conditions of mineral deposits development. You're welcome. Such an impact has negative consequences. The 
An excess of bromine in the human body leads to a decrease in the concentration of iodine and the hormones of the thyroid gland, hyperthyroidism, and also contributes to the rapid release of chloride ions by the kidneys. The main source of bromine in the tailings pond is mine water. Among the heavy metals, an increased content of lead and vanadium is always noted, which enter the water of the tailings pond and the water of surface water bodies from the enrichment tails. Among the studied natural and man-made water bodies, the greatest ecological risk is noted in the tailings Stogan minus 2.53 as of the 5th of April 2020. It should be noted that over time the ecological risk increases in the tailing Stogare and in the pond Nevoda. In the Saxahan River, changes in environmental risk values over time do not have a clear dependence. This is due to the fact that the hydrochemical regime of the river is formed under the influence of not only man-made but also natural factors. It should also be noted that information for assessing the environmental situation in Krippers is not publicly available. Therefore, in order to achieve world standards in the field of mineral extraction according to the criteria of sustainable development, Ukrainian companies still need to pay a lot of attention to the issues of openness of information about nature protection. Conclusions the mining industry has a significant effect on the ecological state of water bodies, which is confirmed by the calculated value of ecological risk. It was determined that the water of the tailing storage has the greatest environmental risk minus 2.53 on the 5th of April 2020. The Saxagon River 0.17 on the 19th of March 2014 has the lowest. The magnitude of ecological risk increases over time in almost all water bodies. The proposed method of calculating environmental risk for water bodies can be used to analyze the effectiveness of environmental protection measures and sustainable development of mining areas. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your um, presentation. Such a nice British accent. Uh, okay, and we have already first question in our chat. Um, there is a question: Where uh, where did you get the input data for the risk calculation? Thank you. The result of hydrochemical observation of the territories in Northern Iron Ore Basin Works, which were conducted by the state enterprise. Ukrachermet geology were used to assess of environmental risk. I was the head of scientific topic from state enterprise Ukrachermet geology from 2040-2020. Okay, thank you. I, Any other uh, questions? I have one. one. Uh, uh, how uh, can you uh, justify uh, that you have a risk value uh, greater set one? Uh, thank you. The count of macro components exceeds the severed limit value, not in all water samples. Therefore, used the recommendation in this article to calculate the environmental risk. I took the total number of chemical elements, uh, 80, 80 elements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 80 elements were taken to analyze. Okay, anyway, in case some other questions, in case you have colleagues, like actually Natalia is with us, yes, you can just actually share your questions uh, in uh, chat, yes. And I think like actually she will be able to answer, okay? And not to take um, further review, yes, let's uh, move further, yes. Um, the next uh, presentation is Natalia uh, Skorobogatova, Innovative Technologies for Organizing a Balanced Development of the Business Ecosystem in the Example of Agriculture in Ukraine. You're welcome. 
dear colleagues, dear conference participants, my name is Natalia Skorombagatova. I am associate professor at the Department of International Economics, Igor Sikorsky KPI. Today I would like to bring your attention to the result of the study on the topic Innovative Technology for Organizing a Balanced Development of the Business Ecosystem. As an example, we will take uh, agriculture in Ukraine. The object of the study is the process of uh, formation a business ecosystem using innovative technology. And we will take a look at the Ukrainian economy as an example, uh, more especially agricultural sector. We have taken into account these three key points. Sectoral analysis of Ukraine's economy, an ecosystem approach for organizing a model of a circular economy of an, uh, on the example of agriculture, and innovative tools for balancing business ecosystem development. A significant increase in population, industrial and agricultural production, the use of uh, vehicles uh, and other factors in recent decades have affected the deterioration of the environment, the growth of social and environmental problems, etc. Also, the war in Ukraine has not only social and economic consequences, but also large-scale environmental consequences. Population growth on a global scale increases the urgency of finding ways to solve the food problem of mankind. Ukraine is one of the key supplier of agricultural products to the world market. As you can see on the slide, the share of the agriculture in economy is growing and in 2021 it was 10% of GDP. But the share of the manufacturing industry is gradually declining. Moreover, in recent decades uh, there has been a clear trend of reorientation of our state from industrial to agrarian. Since agriculture makes up a significant share of Ukrainians' GDP, it is important to introduce innovative methods of organization of production process in this industry. The share of agriculture in Ukraine's GDP is higher than in European countries and it is also higher than the world average. The problem of domestic agriculture is low value added. In European countries, the added value is several times higher, as you could see on the slide. In 2019, value added per worker in Ukraine amounted to about $5,000 USA compared to $25,000 USA in European countries. The low level of value added in Ukraine indicates a low level of processing of incoming raw materials, usually associated with a low level of science intensity in the industry. But leading European countries have a significantly higher level of value added to agriculture products through the use of an integrated approach. In Europe, uh, no primary raw materials are sold, but products of its processing, including for export. In order to uh, increase the level of added value of domestic products, uh, we consider it necessary to support the development of processing industries. At the same time, it is necessary to apply a systematic approach to the creation of the sectoral economy. And in circular economy, uh, sectoral relations should be built uh, taking into account the economic interest of individual economic agents and the overall economic effect of the system. This approach will simultaneously reduce the country's import uh, dependence as foreign supplies will be replaced by domestic producers. And this is especially true during the post-war recovery of Ukrainian economy. 
to implement a circular economy in the agricultural sector, we propose to use an ecosystem approach. During the study, an ecosystem model of agribusiness was developed, as you could see on the slide. According to the degree of management and influence on the final result, we propose to distinguish between the internal and external environment of the agribusiness ecosystem. The internal environmental of uh, agribusiness ecosystem includes the main participants like uh, customs, agricultural manufacturers and suppliers, and additional participants like uh, recovery centers, collection centers, disposal centers, sharing centers, and so on. As in many systems, there are certain relationships between its elements. Direct del deliveries between system participants are shown by straight lines. And traverse logistics within the circular economy is represented by dotted lines. The transition to environmentally friendly organic production according to the circular economy model make it possible to almost completely eliminate waste that must be disposed of at all stages. According to the basics of the uh, circular economy, uh, users uh, can not only buy but also rent or share the necessary non-current assets. For agricultural producers, uh, such uh, assets are machinery, equipment, uh, land, and sharing centers are an uh, intermediary between the supplier of these resources and agricultural producers. According to the expert forecast, uh, this type of service in agriculture is expected to grow in the coming years. To effective uh, management of the agribusiness ecosystem, we suggest using the CATWOE method. Uh, this method is one of the tools for solving system management problems. Uh, and the main elements of this method for agriculture business you could see on the slide. Uh, by analyzing the impact of each component of the CATWOE analysis, it is possible to maintain optimal condition for the functioning of the agribusiness ecosystem as a single organism. The development of modern technologies and the application of an ecosystem approach to the organization of business process in the agricultural sector will ensure a decent economic result while maintaining a balanced development. By balanced development, we mean a balance between four components, economic, environmental, social and innovative, as you could see on this slide. Uh, the development vectors should be basic for all participants in the agribusiness ecosystem. The rapid development of innovations in Industry 4.0, information and communication technology can significantly optimize business processes, including the agricultural sector. Uh, when uh, taking into account the innovative components, it is important to use a systematic approach uh, since the agricultural products themselves contain a low degree of innovation compared with the products of knowledge-intensive sectors of the economy. At the same time, innovative solutions of uh, all individual participants in the business ecosystem will bring a synergistic effect in related industry. As a result of the study, possible innovative solutions for each of the actors in the agribusiness ecosystem were summarized, as you could see on this slide. It can be both technological innovation and management decision. The innovative smart farming approach to agribusiness is actively spreading around the world. Uh, this approach is based on the use of technologies and solutions uh, uh, of Industry 4.0. You could see the main conclusions and results obtained during the study on this slide. The proposed concept of the agribusiness ecosystem will give a synergetic effect in related industry. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I think we have uh, questions, yes, for you. The previous one, uh -huh, I see it's a question for Natalia Shrestuk. And now I think if this is a question for you. How will the agribusiness ecosystem model developed by your contribution during the reconstruction of Ukraine after war? Thank you for question. Uh, I think uh, that uh, proposed uh, uh, model uh, will help uh, to develop our uh, economy, um, especially recovery our economy after war. Uh, because, uh, uh, as uh, uh, you could see on the slide, the main part of Ukrainian economy is agri-sphere. And uh, our, the main problem of our agri-sphere is the uh, low level of value added or low level of profitability. Uh, when I compared uh, analogical result for European country, I saw that uh, a value added in a um, European country is uh, uh, more than five uh, times uh, more uh, bigger than in Ukraine. So if we introduce uh, 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 ecosystem, agribusiness ecosystem approach in our economy, it uh, help us involve all uh, industry uh, through the uh, sim uh, single system. And uh, we could use uh, uh, the relationship between uh, suppliers, between producers, between uh, uh, consumers uh, in one system. And uh, uh, using this uh, approach, we minimize the level of risk. Uh, we minimize. We could minimize the influence of the foreign market because, as we could see. Uh, in the war, we have problem with log logistics, uh, but uh, this approach could uh, minimize the level of this risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Just actually, we need to take into account anyway that after the war, a lot of land will be contaminated. So uh, mm -hmm. restoration will take time. So I think it's uh, anyway might affect uh, the business model, yes, and these like ecosystem creation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, another question, Andri, you're welcome. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, what, uh, in your opinion, uh, are the most effective innovation solution for Ukraine? In Agrisphere? Yes. Uh, uh, I think that uh, we should use technology industry for, for example, artificial intelligence, uh, um, Internet of Things, and other solution uh, to organize uh, business in agri sphere. Because uh, using this technology, we could uh, um, receive more profit, and we could uh, decrease uh, our uh, costs. And of course, we could. Uh, uh, minimize uh, uh, influence for ecological. Uh, for example, we could use uh, um, less uh, natural resources and we could use these resources more effectively. Uh, and uh, so this solution is for me is more um, is more important in this sphere. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we have some time. I have like actually, it's very interesting topic. You know, everything is considered with the um, agrosphere, yes, because uh, it's like future and it's about the most important things because people every time need to eat. Yes, they need food. Yes, so anyway, it's uh, and like um, I have while there was a presentation I've uh, noted and wanted to ask you and uh, have you done the mathematical calculation that supports that your agro business yes uh, ecosystem model and in uh, in another one yes in continuation have you compared these calculations with existing analogs yes and maybe you have a software product developed because like very nice graphs yes and so on in comparison 
thank you. Uh, now we have some problem with uh, statistical data, and um, we could not receive information from all participants from this uh, model. Uh, but I hope uh, during some time we uh, could receive uh, some data to make a study to make mathematical calculation uh, and uh, to compare the result of our model with uh, uh, another solutions from another scientist uh, but uh, if uh, we compare uh, the value added uh, from ukraine and foreign countries we could see that uh, we have uh, um, large uh, we have big uh, uh, potential for growth our economy Okay, thank you very much. Yes, uh, it was very interesting. Sorry for a lot of questions. In case somebody have uh, some comments, questions, you are welcome. Um, like uh, Natalia is here. Yes, so you can ask it in the chat or do you have another? We have uh, one question in chat um, from Vladimir Kutsenko. Yes, we asked it. It was the first one. Yes, we have already asked it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So uh, good luck with your work. Yes. And hope to see you next year with uh, uh, like already development. Yes. With proceedings of the work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's move further. And uh, our next speaker is uh, Lubov Vovk. Yes. Or Pavlovov or together the influence of deep loosening on the ecological and melioration state of drained mineral soils. You're welcome. I'm Lubov Volk, an associate professor of National University of Water and Environmental Engineering, Rivne, Ukraine. The influence of deep pollution on the ecological and mineration state of draining mineral soils. The current problems of energy, water, and food crisis, as well as climate changes, determine the need to improve and appropriate adaptive measures to improve the ecological and reclamation state of draining mineral soils. In the zone of drainage reclamation, this is possible based on the development and adaptive complex, including agro-reclamation measures. They are aimed uh, an effective regulation of water regime, regulation and accumulation of moisture in the soil profile and within the system, and improvement of technologies, and means of deep soil loosening uh, according to the energy efficient and resource saving principles. They will make it possible to effectively accumulate moisture in the soil. One moment, please. Uh, we have a nice <laughs> little problem. <laughs> we have a problem. Yeah, like actually technical issues, mm -hmm. you know, it's like um, every time everything is subjected to change without notice. Okay. Uh, uh, I think like actually we need to uh, uh, we, we can restart. 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 We can Let's start the same one, yes, from the beginning.
to increase in moisture supply. Okay. Research. We can start from the point where it was stopped. Yes, anyway, like actually everyone is uh, connecting, so yes. Давайте почнемо там, де воно зупинилося, бо вже всі доєднуються, в принципі, ті, хто були, тому так. Продовжуємо. For comparative evolution of various variants application effectiveness of draining mineral source depletion on the representative object for the condition of the western Polisia, Ukraine. Experimental study was carried out. According to the obtained experimental results, productive calculations were made based on the use of an appropriate complex for casting and simulation models, which includes a local climate, climate model, water regime models, and water regulation technologies of draining leads. A model of the development and formation of crop, which are implemented on the basis of long-term forecast. For an approximate assessment of the research measures, ecological sustainability, ecological reliability factors, consideration of the operation and to maintain forable natural and reclamation and soil regimes within the project period. It is necessary to calculate function uh, ecological reliability coefficient of the reclamation system. The, the ecologically uh, uh, optimal option uh, is considered to be the one for which ecological reliability coefficient in the interval of values 0 0.5 to 1. In addition, ecological reliability coefficient indirectly reflects the ecological and amelioration state of drainage mineral soils. Once the basis of the research generalization was scientifically substantiated, uh, the need to possibility through the pro energy efficient and moisture regulating technologies and technical means of deep loosening to influence the improvement of technical, technological, and use economic efficiency of draining mineral source. Deep loosening changes the macrostructure of draining mineral source and affects the macro aggregate state of soil their density and uh, porosity, water physical properties, and accordingly the ecological and generation state of draining mineral soils, and the condition for the development of cultivated crops. To ensure the implementation of the necessary improvement of deep loosening for modern conditions and the requirements, a transition from the traditional widely used check and strip loosening technologies to continuous layer by layer deep loosening of the soil differentiated by the is proposed. This soil loosening method can be improved according to energy efficient and moisture regulation principles and according to tired technical means. The improved technologies and means of deep continuous lesson made it possible to improve the structure of the soil, which is development and each occurring layer by layer. At the same time, it makes it possible to differential uh, the value of its lesson by depth of up to 0 0.6 meters. The proposed design of deep lesson in improved lesson is presented on this slide. Comparative field production tests of various technologies and means of deep loosening were performed at the facility of the private agriculture enterprise Myrne in the Kastopil district of Rimne region, Ukraine, on an area of uh, 25 hectares. Table 1 presents a generalized comparative characteristic of values of the main indicators of water physical properties in the 0 0.6 meters soil layer averaged over time by the after effect period and plan by the soil profile and by different types and variants of its listening. The 
the term of effective technologies after effect of the considered methods of deep loosening of draining mineral source was crack soil loosen one year, strip soil loosen three years, continuous soil loosen up to four years. Table 2 presents a generalized comparative characteristic of the average values of the main agro-amelioration indicators of layer of loosened soil with a change in supply of productive moisture and according to the most universal indicator of cultivated crops productivity of variance of its loosening. Table 3 shows the comparative efficiency of using different variants of deep loosening of draining mineral soils according to the result or field experience. The obtained result of harvest of cultivated crops adequately describes the achieved indicator of improvement of their growing conditions and ensures their increase on average according to the option of deep loosening of draining mineral source. Crack loosening of the soil 5 to 10 percent. Strip loosening of the soil from 10 to 20 percent. Continuous loosening of the soil improved from 20 to 35 percent. The results of the analysis show that the method of continuous loosening of the soil provides a greater increase in the yield of cultivated crop than with the crack and or strip loosening of the soil. This not only com compensates of uh, the cost of its uh, implementation, but also creates a profit. The summarized results of determine the economic efficiency on of investments in the reconstruction and modernization drainage system using various technologies and mean of deep loosening according to the appropriate methods and models are presented in Table 4. Thus, all considered technologies of deep loosening of the soil are, are profitable and economically beneficial. At the same time, the most technologically economically and ecologically effective in the improved and continuous deep loosening of the soil. All conclusions are presented on this slide. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you. Thank you for just actually the presentation. Okay, now it's time okay. for, yes, for questions. You hear uh, so, yeah, yeah, we can hear okay. you. Yeah, okay. so uh, some questions, do we have some? Uh, I'm I sorry, I need to open it, a chat. Yes, please, Andrei, yeah. Uh, I have one question. Um, one moment. Um, uh, uh, can you uh, results of uh, of your research uh, be used uh, in the other other regions of Ukraine? Results of my uh, of uh, other uh, of other uh, uh, research uh, can be used uh, for Western police only. Uh, because it's uh, it's research um, by obtaining on uh, object uh, on Western police uh, object it was uh, uh, private agriculture enterprise Myrna in Kustopil and so on we uh, we can't use only only Western police. Mm -hmm. uh, thank okay, you. thank you. Just actually, there is in the chat a, a question. Such research requires large amounts of field research. Can you explain when these studies were conducted and how were the soil samples taken? Um, uh, um, maybe one second. I can't see this. 
questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the chat, yes. Uh, there is a question from Alexander ah, okay, Farakov, okay, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such research requires a large amount and field research. Can you explain when the studies were conducted, how were results simply taken? Uh, I uh, I can't uh, uh, I can't uh, answer to, uh, on these questions because uh, I have uh, I have at this uh, conference my crafters. Maybe <laughs> they can um, uh, answer it on this question. Uh, uh, I. Um, I will write. I will write uh, in chat. Uh, answer. Okay, the okay. answer. Okay, I'll ask them yes, and it will be good to receive uh, a feedback and also mm -hmm. like uh, when the presentation was going. Yes, um, mm -hmm. um, I have looked through. Yes, and also one question: How did you determine the effectiveness? Yes. Uh, of the use of this improved continuous loosening of the soil, yes? And does your research include meteorological data? Mm -hmm. In case it is possible. Uh, we have many, many uh, um, uh, research uh, experiments data. Uh, we can uh, do that many times and uh, we... Um, Comparate uh, main aggregation indicators, uh, water physical properties, its uh, its climate uh, includes, and uh, and and uh, uh, comparate uh, indicators of economical economic efficiency, and so on. Obtain uh, results. Uh, climate uh, climate uh, properties. Uh, it was. And aggregation indicators because uh, and uh, um, we obtained uh, productive moisture and uh, productive of crops and uh, uh, this information includes uh, these characteristics. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. It's also very interesting, yep, and uh, we will uh, wait for your response on the previous question, yes, because you see in the terms of the um, military aggression, yes, everyone is, uh, um, you know, like interested when the samples are sample. taking, how, yes, in what form and so on, so uh, to know the um, updates about the research. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation, yes, and for your answer. Uh, colleagues, any comments, any other questions? In case no, so we are up to move to another uh, presentation. Yes, and it is Ihor Honcherenko. So development of a scientific and methodod methodological approach to assessing losses from a warfare in natural ecosystems on the territory of Ukraine. You're welcome. Dear organizers and participants of the conference, I am glad to welcome you and offer to your attention the presentation of the research named Development of a Scientific and Methodological Approach for Assessing Losses from Warfare in Natural Ecosystems in the Territory of Ukraine. In the field of military ecology, a significant unresolved problem is the development of appropriate methods for assessing the damage caused by hostilities in natural ecosystems. Our research proposes an integrated approach to predict the potential impact of hostilities by considering environmental information, military technogenic load indicators, trophic networks, and biodiversity composition. The research presents a block diagram for assessing the state of ecosystems in war zones and proposes a classification of military technogenic disturbance levels based on the state of edifying psychosia. Currently, an undeclared war is ongoing in Ukraine by the Russian Federation, affecting the Polisha and Slobojensky regions, as well as the southeastern industrial regions. The pollution and potential environmental damage in these areas are directly related to the military technogenic load resulting from the use of weapons and military equipment. This includes both natural ecosystems and industrial urban regions. Qualitative and evaluative methods are used in the practice of forecasting and precision military ecology to assess the impact of hostilities on natural ecosystems. However, there are challenges in determining the relative importance of military and technogenic factors and estimating the quantitative parameters of the natural ecosystem. 
Further research is needed to identify the key factors influencing the military technogenic load in natural ecosystems. This slide presents a diagram of component factors for assessing the military technogenic load on a natural environment. These factors include the specifics of hostilities, the origin and features of hostility damage, the spatial scale of hostilities and the period of influence of hostilities. The Emerald Network, a significant part of which is located in Ukraine, encompasses 5.8 million hectares, 9% of Ukraine's land area. However, a significant portion of these territories already have protective status, and some areas, such as the Dnieper Cascade Reservoirs, serve as migratory paths for birds. The hostilities pose a threat to these territories, risking their destruction or significant military technogenic impact. Approximately 2.9 million hectares of nature conservation territories within the Emerald Network are under threat of destruction. To assess the military technogenic load from hostilities, the concept of a military natural technogenic geosystem is proposed. This involves differentiating the reaction of ecosystems to military technogenic load, considering technogenic changes in environmental factors, and conducting an integrated assessment based on quantitative data. This scheme illustrates the hierarchical structure of a complex military natural technogenic geosystem and its interaction with the environment, based on two main approaches, the biological-ecological approach and the ecological-geographical approach. The biological-ecological approach organizes the hierarchical series as follows, place of residence and community, ecosystem, biome. When examining each block or element of the natural environment in the military natural technogenic geosystem, we find that they have an internal balance and exist in a quasi-stationary state. However, at the limits of environmental homogeneity, there are exchangeable mass transfer flows that military origin ingredients and military technogenic energy fields can activate. The boundaries of the military natural technogenic geosystem are conditional, blurred, and determined by the level of the natural or altered geochemical background. Explanation of the designations used in the scheme you can see in the table on the next slide named the classification of levels of military technogenic disturbance of natural ecosystems. Classification is based on the state of edifying synergia, which provides an estimate of the ecosystem's ability to self renew In the case of military technogenic influence, class I and II, an effective and permanent control of the population density of edifying species is necessary. In the reclamation of these territories, especially in class III, the restoration of the edifying synergia that formed the basis of the ecosystem before the beginning of hostilities should be the primary focus. Based on the main principles of biosynology theory, a working hypothesis suggests that the preservation of the viability of the edifying sinuses of phytocenosis is a necessary and sufficient condition for the self-regeneration of the biota in the operational zones of hostilities. Several studies have shown that the degradation of ecosystems is almost irreversible when the population density of the edifying group of species in forest ecosystems, these are the main forest forming species, decreases by two or more times. However, it is important to note that the ecosystem productivity indicator, which characterizes the degree of military technogenic damage to the natural environment, is ambiguous in its response to technogenic factors. Since the existence and functioning of ecosystems rely on a limited number of species, mainly plants, the military technogenic effect on these key species causes disruptions and changes in other components of ecosystems. Therefore, a quantitative change in the population density of autochthonous species edifiers could serve as an indicator of the degree of military technogenic damage to the ecosystem, and the time frame of the action could indicate its speed. To develop a comprehensive model for ecosystem assessment in the zone of hostilities, we will examine the balance equations of terrestrial ecosystems associated with military facilities. These equations are based on the principles of mass and energy conservation and describe the exchange of mass and energy among the key biotic components of the ecosystem, producers, substrates, and consumers. The slide presents the equations of the model and its components. Biomass refers to the amount of functioning living matter, measured in mass units and related to a unit of area or volume, essentially indicating the average density of biomass. Biomass producers are autotrophic organisms, primarily green plants, capable of creating organic matter from simple inorganic compounds. Substrates with biomass represent the nutrients on which microorganisms thrive. Biomass consumers are heterotrophic organisms, including animals, macroconsumers, as well as bacteria and fungi, microconsumers. They consume pre-existing organic substances without decomposing them into simple mineral components. Consumers are categorized into different orders. Consumers of the first order are consumed by plants, while consumers of the second, third, and subsequent orders are predators. 
The model of the military facilities ecosystem is described by generalized aggregated coordinates P, Q, and S. To account for the significant impact of military measures and the rehabilitative effects of environmental protection measures, additional functions W and U are introduced into the balance equations used in mathematical ecology to describe ecosystem functioning. Currently, there is insufficient experimental data to construct a full-scale model of the military object ecosystem in the presented form, equations 1, 2, 3. Such a model would be highly complex, so it is recommended to break down the ecosystem of the military facility into subsystems consisting of equally potentially hazardous objects within the biogeosynosis. These subsystems can be aggregated using appropriate generalizing indicators, indices, to describe the state of producers, consumers, and substrates. In this manner, the entire terrestrial ecosystem of the military facility is divided into subsystems, and each subsystem has its own aggregated simulation mathematical model. The slide provides a brief description of the consequences of hostilities on the ecosystems and natural environments of Ukraine, which can be categorized into two groups, direct and indirect effects. The determination of a biologically justified permissible threshold value for technogenic changes in the phytosynosis edificator sinus of an ecosystem is crucial for guiding development paths and selecting database management strategies in the face of inevitable military and technological intrusion into the natural equilibrium ecosystem. Developed mathematical model accurately reflects the impact of military operations on the biosynoses of educational facilities can be utilized as a mathematical model for phenomena whose parameters can be identified, calibrated, using identification algorithms and sufficient experimental data. After identification, calibration can be incorporated into algorithms for the comprehensive assessment and prediction of the state of terrestrial ecosystems affected by military operations. By employing accepted biological methods and conducting regular observations using remote sensing satellites or UAVs, which monitor changes in the primary productivity indicator over time and space, it is possible to determine the dimensions of military technogenic impact zones as well as the dynamics and pace of this process. Thank you for your attention. For comments and recommendations, please contact us. Okay, thank you very much. It's like a very triggering topic for uh, all Ukraine, yes, Ukrainians, and like it's really good that scientists are working on it. Yep. And uh, just looking through the slides, um, I have a question like, how can the concept, this concept of military neutral technogenic geosystems, yes, and differentiated consideration of ecosystem reactions contribute to the assessment of military technogenic load and ecological safety during such hostiles? Thank you very much. Hello, all. Um... The concept of military natural technogenic geosystem and uh, differentiated consideration of ecosystem reaction can contribute to the assessment of military technogenic load and ecological safety during hostilities in several ways. Uh, by recognizing the specific impacts of military activities on different ecosystem, um, it allows for a more accurate evaluation uh, of the extent of ecological disturbance and potential environmental risks. Uh, it enables the identification of uh, vulnerable ecosystems uh, and the development of uh, targeted uh, vegetation strategies to minimize negative impacts. Uh, and additionally, uh, by considering ecosystem reaction, it helps uh, in understanding the resilience and recovery potential of affected ecosystems, uh, which is crucial for ensuring ecological safety. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And just actually, um, there was how does the interplay between biological, ecological, and ecological geographical perspectives, yes, uh, influence the understanding of the natural environment within these military neutral technogenic um, geosystems? Thank you. you. 
Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, also, it's a really interesting question. Um, the interplay between biological, ecological, and ecological geographical uh, perspectives uh, within military natural technogenic geosystems influences uh, their understanding of the natural environment in various ways. The biological and ecological perspective focuses on the interactions and dynamics of living organisms, organisms within um, ecosystems, including the effects of military activities on species uh, compulsion, population, uh, densities, and ecological process. On the other hand, the um, ecological uh, geographical uh, perspectives uh, considers uh, the uh, spatial uh, distribution, landscape patterns, and water environmental factors that influence ecosystems. Uh, by integrating uh, these uh, perspectives, a more comprehensive understanding uh, of the natural environment within military natural technogenic geosystems can be achieved, uh, encompassing both biological and physical aspects. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And just actually, um, you know, like um, our territory, um, you know, suffered now from the military conflict, but have you rely on the uh, works of authors that analyze the same hostiles that were done in, for example, Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan? Or like uh, actually you were only relying on your expertise here in Ukraine? Uh, yes, of course, we um, um, uh, read uh, a lot of articles in uh, different countries uh, with hostilities, uh, but uh, the, uh, we have uh, another specific way uh, in Ukraine. And unfortunately, uh, there are um, a lot of uh, really interesting research articles in uh, this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Just actually, you know, uh, as I mentioned from the beginning, this is a very triggering topic, yes? And we can ask and ask. You have also one question from Andrea already in the chat, if you don't mind to answer there in the chat, okay? And we will move further, okay? Thank you very much for the yes, presentation. Thank and you. Yes, and hope that um, next year you uh, everything will be over. Yes, with our victory, and you will present us already results how it was recovered this military damaged territories. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's move further, and the next speaker is uh, Anna Yatsishin. So with the uh, perspectives of nuclear energy development in Ukraine on the global trends basis. You're welcome. I plan to use the results of a study on the topic of perspectives of nuclear energy development in Ukraine on the global trends basis. The relevance of the research is confirmed by the fact that Ukraine is also investigated the use of ethanol use. The following measures were carried out during from 2018 to 2019. And first, Energy Atom and Holtec International signed a memorandum of understanding on cooperation in the use planned to lessen SMR160 technology in Ukraine. To build these uh, reactors at Ukraine nuclear power plants and to partially localize production of uh, SMR160 equipment at Ukraine enterprises. And an AIC energy item SSTIC of RIC uh, and Holtec International signed an agreement on the creation of an international consortium to implement technology of them, small modular reactors, SMR160 uh, in Ukraine. The 2021 rapper states that most SMR concept can be divided into five main categories. Uh, first, a single model for light water SMRs. They are designed and use appropriate types of fuels to create autonomous units suitable for development within the concept of distributed generation or capable of uh, replacing small power units operating on fossil fuels. 
Um, and uh, multimodal radioisomerism earth can be operated as uh, sources of electricity within the concept of uh, distribute generation or replace medium sized power units providing the base load depending on the generation capacity. Uh, next, mobile or portable SMRs allow easy installation movement from one state to another. The category uh, includes reactors of floating power units. Uh, next, some um, MRs of the uh, four generations are based on modern technologies that differ from uh, those used in light water reactors. And last, micro modular reactors. Uh, their design provide power up to 10 megawatts. They can, as a rule, operate in semi automatic mode. Uh, such reactors have characteristics that facilitate easily realized trans transpiration compared to uh, larger SMPs. Usually, these uh, installations are based on concepts that differ from those used at light water reactors. Uh, the first slide presents various uh, examples of small model, uh, modular reactors placements. For instance, it shows how such reactors can be located underground or on ships. Um, the advantages of SMR compared to high power reactors were outlined as a result of the analysis of the scientific literature. First, um, Modular principle ensures serial production, the possibility of complete, uh, complete, complete factory production of the model and it's deli uh, delivered to the NPP site. Uh, second, high levels of internal self-protection and the wide use of passive system allows uh, for the revised reproduc reduction. Set of technological system important for safety, operation in standby mode, uh, necessary for traditional types of nuclear power plants and making SMR cheaper. Third, uh, operation in power tracking mode, power many uh, varying, allows combining SMR with other renewable sources of electricity. First, high protection of the SMRA against in the, uh, external influence of natural and technology, technologic nature. Some projects envisage underground placement of SMR reactor installation. Fifth, uh, flexibility in terms of location. It is permissible to place SMR directly in energy consumption centers. It eliminates um, the need for external power lines and maintenance in difficult climate, climatic and terrain conditions. And last, micro reactors are a type of SMR. They can be used as a backup power source in emerging, uh, emergence instead of uh, generation, generators that uh, often run of diesel fuel, for example, in rural areas or small business. Um, every year amount of hydrogen consumption increases. So uh, the development of hydrogen energy is taking place. Many countries develop their own hydrogen strategy. The world public and scientists predict a significant effect from the operation of hybrid energy system for the synergistic inter uh, interaction of renewable energy sources and nuclear power plants. Such hybrid system will make it possible to generate electricity and provide low carbon uh, thermal energy for the industry at a price lower than a traditional thermal generation. Um, the six slide present an example nuclear renewable hybrid energy system configuration. Considering uh, SMR, according to various criteria characterizing uh, the adventures, we will describe the safety. Uh, criteria and it is its indi indicators. Uh, first, uh, reducing the levels, the severity of emergency model models. 
um, second efficiency of paces of the system, and last uh, reduced protective zone also outside the site. Double one. Uh, compress ethmr and hyper reactors according to the criteria operational safety. Uh, table one was complete, uh, compiled based on scientific uh, scientific publication or open source. You can see in slide. The nine slide present indicators according to the criteria infrastructure and compress ethmr with high power reactors. The 10 site present indicators according to the criteria personal resource and compares SMR with high power reactors. Uh, the scientists recommend, uh, recommended taking into account the following aspect during the compar uh, comparative evolution of reactor technologies. So, first, Economy reliability, the possibility of NPP power units operating in different modes. Uh, next, compl uh, compliance of reactor technology with international safety standards, criteria of EI, -E uh, WNNR I3, AQR4. In uh, comparability with the requ uh, requirements of regulatory documentation of Ukraine on nuclear and radiation safety. Next, the possibility of rely uh, reliable provision of nuclear fuel taken into account of uranium reserves, div um, diversification of suppliers and manufacturers. Uh, involvement uh, on NPP power units in ensuring condition of reliable functioning for the unified energy system of Ukraine, uh, ensuring a non-proliferation regime by the legislation and international obligation of Ukraine, uh, and uh, the possibility of zero construction, further operational support of power units and production localization of their system and components. Uh, the global trends regard, uh, regarding the development of the nuclear power, uh, power industry were considered as a result of the research. They include uh, an extend, uh, extension of the operating life of nuclear power units, um, uh, the development of atomic uh, energy in the context of the Paris Agreement, the development of nuclear hydrogen energy, uh, significant in interaction of renewable energy sources and nuclear power plants, introduction of new reactor technologies. A scientists from different countries uh, substa uh, substa uh, substated uh, several advantages of SMR construction and use in comparisons with high power reactors. Uh, large finance, uh, financial and time cost of construction and implement, uh, implementation, uh, high safety indi indicators for the environment and personal, significant potential for shifting energy capacities, a synergy with renewable energy source and increasing the efficiency with, within the hybrid energy system, and quick response to the need of the energy market. First, the preference should be given to light water, evolutionary, SMR project during assessing uh, prospects for SMR technology application in Ukraine. This uh, is because the te technical solution use accumulated ex ex experience in operating and analyzing the safety of operational NPPs with we, we are, are. Uh, secondly, SMR concepts that can already be installed at the operating states of the NPPs of Ukraine should be chosen. Such action will contribute to the reduction, uh, reduction of uh, financial costs for SMR construction and contribute to the sustainable um, development of the nuclear energy industry of Ukraine.
Certainly, uh, the exercise extinct uh, met method uh, methodical approaches and criteria from solid degree to units for existing nuclear power plants in Ukraine. The new nuclear power plants, particularly private atomic atomic power plants, should be improved. And last, first, it is expected to involve scientists from the National Academy of Science of Ukraine to study possible as um, air use in Ukraine. The last one has a higher safety level, uh, this existing ones and significantly less impact on the external environment. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. Dear colleagues, any questions, please? Okay, Nastasia, your question. Uh, where in Ukraine, in your opinion, can small modular reactor be built? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your questions. Um, investigating uh, the implementation of small model reactors worldwide, uh, I believe uh, that the constructions of small model reactors uh, on the uh, cities of already operating nuclear plants is uh, optimal for Ukraine at the moment. Uh, such uh, placement uh, will um, uh, reduce uh, the finance, uh, financial and time cost um, 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 of the uh, constructions uh, because um, the necessary infrastructures um, is already available at the NPP cities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it, it, anyway, it is possible. So thank you very much. Uh, just actually in case uh, uh, in case it is possible, like actually there is one more question in the chat. Can you just answer on it over there? And in case people have some uh, other questions or some comments, yes, they can share it uh, also in the chat, yes? So okay. for now, thank you very much. We need to move uh, further because we are a little bit behind the schedule. Yeah. So thank you very much. Presentation is very, very interesting. Yes. And it's very, very promising and optimistic for Ukraine. Uh, hopefully you will proceed and next year we will uh, receive even more results with already implementation. Thank you. And we are moving further. We have Anastasia Lahoyka. Yes, it's development of recommendations for improving the radiation monitoring system of Ukraine. Anastasia, you are welcome. A reports on the topic is offered for your attention, development of recommendation for improving the radiation monitoring system of Ukraine. Nowadays, many institutions and organizations worldwide use hazardous radiation technologies and sources of ionizing radiation in their activities. About 10,000 enterprises in Ukraine as of the end of 2021 were operating. Such objects include nuclear power plants, NPP, research reactors, specialist plants for processing and storing radioactive waste, enterprises extracting and processing uranium ores, and medical facilities using radioisotopes. All these objects are objects of increased danger because emergencies related to their activities can lead um, uh, to highly complex con uh, consequences for the present and future generation due to uncontrolled accident and controlled uh, terrorist act release of a significant number of radioactive substances into the environment. Therefore, one of the most critical components of the country's um, national security is the provision of nuclear and radiation safety. The legal act to regulate science publication information and resources were announced as the research as a functionality of radiation monitoring networks. The result of analyzing showed uh, that the problem outlined by us was con considering and describing in the follows uh, direction. First, uh, construction of an environmental monitoring networks, so development equipment for radiation monitoring networks, 
developing software for analysis and visualization monitoring data, using monitoring data for solving management by the radioactively contaminated territory. Uh, therefore, issues of ensuring nuclear and radiation security are looked up uh, for worldwide. And the aim is to determine the main advantages and disadvantages of radiation monitoring networks and to provide a recommendation for the improved for Ukraine. Today, radiation monitoring in Ukraine is carried out by various entities uh, like uh, Energy Atoms, the State Agency of Ukraine, and Exclusions and Management, the State Special Agency, the National Academy of Science, and the Ukraine Hydromedicine, and the State Service of Ukraine for Emergency Institution. Uh, the system provides only sectoral observation of the radiation environments. All received information about uh, radioactivity is open to the public source. Uh, uh, integrate network of radiation monitoring of the environment you can see in feature one and two. You can find out with the help of the map, the radiation levels, the location of the measurement point, and who provided the information. Then, a nationwide radnet system was generated to observe environmental radiation pollution levels. System radnet has tracked radiation levels from testing nuclear weapon and nuclear reactors, accident and Chernobyl and NTP, uh, NPP Ukraine and Fukushima and PP Japan. During a radiological incident, government officially used radnet data to help make science-based uh, decision about protecting the popula population. A has uh, 140 station or air monitors then run 24 hours a day during the week and collect data near real time gamma radiation measurement. Uh, feature 3 shows radar static air monitoring location and precipitation and drinking water sampling locations that report data in 2020. On the uh, national level, um, uh, monitoring the dust uh, equivalent rate is carried out on all territories of France. You can see in feature six, the laboratory in the Institute of Radio Protection is red nuclear. Uh, the ultimate detectors represent proportional co uh, counter manufactured by BATT technology. You can see in feature five. The monitoring system operates in real time. It includes redundancy, a recovery plan, and an agreed service commitment from the network operating. Um, uh, monitoring of the public radiation dose, specific dosimetry, is carried out using about 100, 100 uh, dosimeter. Uh, the Swedish Radiation Safety Authority, as is me, um, managed two telemetric networks um, for monitoring external Gamma dose rates, a um, nationwide network consisting of 28 monitoring stations. You can see in feature A, in a network uh, comprised of 30 monitoring stations near nuclear power plants. You can see in feature 7, the monitoring station operates uh, autonomously and transmit data cons uh, continuously to the network service SSME. SSME manages the monitoring station via special software and ensures supporting operations through collaboration with the, uh, the um, administration in the NPP. The so German nationwide monitoring networks includes uh, 1,800 stationary probes equally distributed over the German territory with a typical distance of 20 kilometers between them. You can see in feature 9. Uh, the density is increased in the 25 km emergency planning zone around NPP. These additional props are installed and operated by complementary networks from the federal state. Data, data are exchanged between the uh, Bansamit, Fug, Trash, uh, BFC, and the local government uh, carried out a uh, bilateral agreement. In, in the uh, emergency arrangement, data from all stations can be ex uh, assessed. Uh, um, and was in real time, enabling the population information to be efficient and prompt. Um, the country operates 25 nuclear power reactors and nuclear research reactor, nuclear fuel fabrication facilities, and radioactive phase disposal facility. Korean Institute of Nuclear Safety, PINC, is the only atomic safety regulator aspect organization that protects the public and the environment from the harmful effect of radiation. Kinds on behalf of the Korean uh, government uh, conducted, uh, conducted um, radiation monitoring around nuclear facilities and analyzed analyzed uh, the relevant samples. Um, furthermore, local government around nuclear facilities have operated the radiation monitoring system.
National Emergency Operations Center has its radioactivity monitor network NADA. It consists of 76 stations placed on the met meteorological station Meteo Swiss in all territory of Switzerland. You can see in feature alert. Uh, that uh, transmitted uh, the measured value of at 10 minutes in interval to the initial emergency opera operation center. Um, mainland China is building and exporting 56 nuclear power units uh, as of 31st March 2022. So each of them are operating units. All data about NPP and environmental rotation monitoring can you receive at the website and also you can see in future 12. Uh, to analyze, uh, analyze and compare the nationwide monitor system of different countries, the criteria for displaying data on the electron map about the state of radiation pollution were determined. The also of the publication uh, attribute to, to such criteria you can see in table one. Uh, first, interface in national and English language. Second, meteorological data. Third, uh, the speed of updating uh, the display of radiation monitoring data on the map. First number of radiation monitoring network posts, um, fifth coverage density of the radiation monitoring network, sixth availability of mobile, mobile radiation monitoring stations, seventh coordinates of location of station or post, eighth coordinates of location of radiation hazardous facilities, ninth availability and co coordinates of radioactive monitoring station of water bodies, tenth availability of this stationary monitoring stations for atmospheric air pollution by chemical substance and dust of various fraction, and eleventh uh, ability to export monitoring data for a certain period to a separate file for independent analysis. We also analyzed uh, the availability of various reports on the functioning of the radiation monitoring networks of the above mentioned countries, Countries which were found in public access are accordingly criteria were developed for the following reports. You can see in table two. Uh, first, availability of material of materials at English. Second, frequency of updating the report of the function of the radiation monitoring networks in the country. First, their the year of publication of the last general report on the functioning of the radiation monitoring networks in the country, and first availability of information about radiation pollution from a radiation hazardous object. Uh, to improve the radiation monitoring system of Ukraine, the author suggests the following. Uh, to improve and optimize uh, the notifi uh, notification system for receiving daily information, Increase the coverage area of monitoring network posts to obtain more accurate information about radiation pollution. Increase the number of mobile surveillance posts. Um, also, electromagnetic which displays the state of radiation pollution, indicating the coordinates of the location of radiation hazardous object. Make, a, make it pos uh, possible to export monitoring data for a certain period into a separate file for independent analysis. Implemented um, an interface of maps and reports in English to provide information uh, information to the wide uh, masses. They did uh, quarterly publish the available um, available reports on the radiation status of the territory of Ukraine, including on the web website of related international organization, and to uh, prove information on radiation pollution from radiation hazardous object. One of the main aspects of nuclear and radiation safety is radiation monitoring in the territories where hazardous radiation facilities are located, which various legal acts regulate. The effective um, functioning of radiation monitoring networks is an essential, an essential task for every country of the health of personnel working at hazardous radiation facilities and the population living in contaminated areas. A critical analysis of the function of nationwide monitoring system of various country, um, countries of the world shows that this system has difference in the organization. And the criteria of, for displaying data on the electronic map about the state of radi radiation pollution and the criteria for a, a report on the function of nationwide radiation monitoring networks, which showed the, the advantages and disadvantages of such system were defined. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. Okay. Any questions? Um, I have one. Uh, why did you choose these uh, 
countries, yes, for a critical analysis of the function of radiation monitoring system. So we research the radiation monitoring system uh, of about 20 countries. But in our opinion, the eight countries uh, that we present uh, had their IQ characteristics. That is why we choose them <laughs> for compare it. Okay, and so like actually after your analysis, yes, your personal opinion. So which country or city still has these the most effective radiation monitoring control system? Uh, as I said earlier, all countries uh, have special characteristics. So it's very difficult to say which uh, country has the most effective uh, monitoring system. For example, um, radiation monitoring system of Germany uh, is um, special in that uh, compared to other countries, uh, it has a high density uh, of measurement uh, measurement uh, post uh, for its territory. And another example, uh, monitoring system in China, Ukraine, Sweden um, have. Uh, information about air pollution uh, by chemical substance or dust. So I can say uh, which is most. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And you, for example, made all these recommendations, yes? Mm -hmm. In Ukraine, whom are you presenting these uh, recommendations or uh, sending recommendations or you're making recommendations for what organization? To improve, uh, I mean, like this um, yeah. radiation monitoring system. I understand. Our recommendation to our development um, for subjects like uh, NPP or running mining, uh, mining uh, enterprise. So um, that is for the nuclear fuel cycling facilities. So it's, I think, really a briefly answer, but it's so <laughs> clear. Okay, it's it's really good that like actually such job is uh, work is ongoing and in such research is ongoing. Uh, there is uh, never end for perfection. So of course, due to the fact that uh, you know different scenarios of the development of this war on the territory of Ukraine is going, and I think like we need to be protected from different sides. Yes, and developed uh, radiation monitoring system will be uh, a lot of help. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for the answers. Maybe somebody else would like to ask, yes. Soon you, uh, you, you, <laughs> you wouldn't like to take part in our workshops because we are so chatty and with Andrea asking a lot of questions. But it's like actually not because we are mean, but your presentations are very, very interesting. Yep. Uh, okay. So uh, in case uh, no one else wants to, let's move to another pre presentation. Uh, Andrei Yatsyshin, yep, and development of mathematical decision-making support tools for effective response to emergencies during the transportation of dangerous substances by road transport. You're welcome. A report on the topic is offered for your attention, development of the mathematical decision-making support tools for effective response to emergencies during the transportation of dangerous substance by road transport. Hazardous materials are widely used in manufacturing, agriculture, medicine, and other industrial fields. Uh, approximately 4 billion tons of harmful substance are transported around the world annually. However, during the transportation on dangerous goods, under various uh, circumstances, uh, uh, traffic accident, natural disaster, acts of terrorist, uh, emergencies may arise related to the depressurization of ca uh, containers, tank containers, cylinders, uh, and the ingress of dangerous chemical into the environment and the creation of significant risk for the population of the surrounding areas in the environment. According to statistics, more than uh, 30 accidents relate to the transportation of dangerous substance by road transport occurs in China every year. There are also known accidents in the world as a, as a result of which people died in Sinaloa, Mexico. There was an accident with the truck transportation ammonia as a result of which uh, 39 people died. 
A third current uh, chloride uh, collided, collided uh, with another vehicles in our urban area of Nanjing, China, killing 29 people and evacuating more than 10,000 people. This slide presents several accidents, including those in Ukraine, which are related to the transportation of dangerous substance by road transport. Uh, effective tools must be used to, uh, to support decision making to prevent uh, and quickly eliminate uh, the consequences of such emergencies. We con uh, conduct uh, conducted a review of the existing uh, mathematical and method uh, methodological support, which is uh, used to assess uh, the situation in the event of accident uh, associated with the spill emissions of dangerous chemicals from the technology containers uh, on road transport and identified the shortcoming. This slide shows the main uh, disadvantages of such a provision, uh, provision uh, therefore an urgent uh, and important scientific problem in the development of uh, new mathematical and software tools that will be better than existing uh, analogies in all main indicators. The research aims to develop an in mathematic tools for assessing the con uh, consequence of accidents while transporting, uh, transporting dangerous substances by road transport. This slide shows the classification on dangerous substance depending on the degree of impact on the environment of people according to the law of Ukraine on transp uh, transportation of dangerous goods. Uh, on the right side, there are spe uh, specialized vehicles for the transportation of dangerous goods. A uh, potential chemical risk in the vicinity of an incident of mobile chemical hazardous object and the settlement zone near such an object is determined by the formal one. Also in this slide show uh, the conditional prob uh, probability of damage in the case of bank in the zone of chemical injury uh, is mainly determined by the location of damage considering the high of the cloud rise. This seed is formed due to the spread of the affected cloud to the, the residential park of the settlement in the breaking areas and in the area of the emergency stop of transport from chemically hazardous substance. Um, uh, on slide six and seven, show table one, average daily distribution of the urban population by place or residence and table two, average daily distribute of the rural population by place of residents for definition the probability of a person living in the once habited in habit. The arrow of the threshold uh, chemical damage in the breaking zone and uh, the size of the emergency stop is determined by the depth of the threshold damage in the areas. The arrow of chemical damage in the breaking uh, breaking zone can be calculated by the following formula taken into account the rise uh, of the affected cloud, formal 3, an area of chemical damage in the ice breaking zone, it is defined uh, as formal 4. The areas of chemical damage in the emergency stop zone can be calculated by the formula taking into account the growth of the affected cloud, formal 5. Uh, in this slide, show angular uh, diminution of zones of actual chemical damage uh, for Formula 5. The following four slides show the stages of development of the uh, corresponding uh, mathematical apparatus. Uh, uh, the formula uh, determines the, the lights of the spill section before the damage vehicle stop. From the uh, determin uh, determination of the spill area plays a crucial role in the decontamination, disinfection, infection uh, of the territory in the case of an accident with the CHC spill, the spill area of chemically hazardous substance, CHC, uh, can be defined by the formula A, taking into account the experimentally determined. Um, the high of spilled uh, as uh, SHC, the type on the underlying surface of the XA type, uh, can, uh, 
uh, can be defined take into account uh, uh, S using the formula 9. Formula 10, the formula determines the ever evaporation time recommendation of SHC and formula 11, the amount of liquid SHC in the breaking zone is determined by the formula taking into account the fraction of uh, infiltration during the shedding to stop uh, the damage transport. The amount of spillage SHC is defined by the formula 13, uh, taking into account uh, the preparation of infiltration after shopping, uh, stopping the damage transport. The initial high of the liquid column in the tank from the amount of stopping as the transport is defined by the formula for uh, 14. Uh, cross section are a formula 15. At short term spill, it can be defined as formula 16. And long term spill can be defined as formula 17. The formula 18 defines the time of enter spill through a small hole. The amount of spilled SHC in the emergency stop area with the complete ending destruction of the capacity taking into account the fraction of infiltration is defined for, uh, as formula 19. Mm, in this slide, uh, show depths of chemical contamination, formula 20, the high of the lifting cloud for the limited degree of damage taken into account sheltering of the population uh, in buildings is determined by the formula uh, 24 and 25 for lesser cases. Calculation were made and compared with full-time measurements uh, to evaluate uh, to accuracy of the proposed mathematical means with the result. Those are techniques used on the example of acid occurring in October 2020 uh, at the be uh, Birmingham Center, England. The result of calculation of the SHC spillet are on the underlying surface and depths of chemical damage are present in in table four. The table shows the mathematical models of pollution of the Earth's surface and air as a result of the accident during SHC transport uh, by road allow as to determine the necessary parameters of the damage zone with high accuracy. Existing methods of uh, effects evaluating chemical accidents cannot be used to solve the test due, uh, due to their significant dis disadvantages, uh, not con uh, considering nature of the underlying surface, SHC absorb uh, absorption, uh, parameters of spilling area of different SHC, use of mathematical uh, apparatus uh, obtained only in Empirically, use a st uh, stationary chemical hazardous objects that do not allow calculate the risk of such emergency even for the population health. New mathematical means of accident assessment were developed to uh, transport hazardous substance in road transport. They are unlike existing ones to take into account the parameters of the car, speed of the driver's reaction, parameters of the depressurization of the tank, nature of the underlying surface and parameters of, of construction in the area place of stay. The high accuracy of the proposed mathematical means is con uh, confirmed by comparing it with data from field measurements and a result of calcul calculation by, the, uh, by other techniques. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. It's a very pleasant last slide. Yes. So, um, a very interesting topic. And by the way, we already facing the first question and it's like spillage of what chemicals can be estimated using proposed mathematical apparatus. Uh, thank you for uh, your questions. Um, uh, this is uh, the R actuality uh, of substance uh, that are um, uh, transported by a specialized uh, vehicles, uh, flammable liquids, corrosive uh, substance, petroleum products, ammonia, uh, hydro. Uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, sulfic acid, uh, and uh, other, and other. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Valery Zvarich. 
Institute of Electrodynamics, National Academy of Science. Did you use only a Gauss model in your model, or you use another type of distribution of data? Я в на українській. Давайте якщо якщо можна буду. Будь ласка. Значить, ваше ваше запитання, наскільки я розумію, полягає в тому, які ми використовували інші моделі ніж гаусові при вашому дослідженні. Да, ви знаєте, ми робили широкий огляд нашого дослідження, і ми, ну, ми знаємо, що якби є гаусівська фактична методика да, розповсюдження, є, скажімо так, методики розсіювання, які базуються на інтегральних законах збереження з осередженими параметрами та ну, методики, так сказати, чисельного моделювання. І, Ну, в, в, в даному випадку ми, е, е, наше дослідження е, спиралося, скажімо так, ми стартували з е, досліджень, е, є, є така, скажімо, методика Савчука, розроблена, е, точніше, удоскон, е, методика Савчука і Аксьонова, вони розглядали, е, ну, скажімо так, прогнозування наслідків хімічних аварій, з участю рухомих резервуарів. Проте там, ну, скажімо так, є певні недоліки в, скажімо так, в цих в сомематичному апараті, тому ми його, скажімо так, удосконалили і адаптували до, ну, до, до наших задач. Тобто саме, саме ці результати стали основою для наших подальших наукових досліджень. Ну, ясно. Просто ви розумієте, що в Гаусові мають певні недоліки. Це те, Звичайно, що... все має недоліки. Є ймовірність безмежно подільних величин з безмежно Стан, маленькою так. вірогідністю, але такого в житті не бува. І тут ну, треба якось з цього виходити. Все найкраще. Добре, дякую вам. вам. Дякую. Вам також, що, при... е... е... що приєдналися до нас на воркшоп. Ну, я приймав участь вчора. Активно. Ми бачили, ми були кухово активно вчора приймали участь. Окей. Okay. Just actually, thank you very much. In short, there was a question about only Gaussian. Yes, uh, models were used, yep. And uh, the answer was not only, yes, uh, some uh, numerical modeling and so on, but uh, at the base was taking Sochuk Aksonov model. Yes, uh, it was improved, yes, and uh, these uh, um, let's say improvement late in the research mainly in, in the research okay so uh any other questions thank you then like actually uh we are out already of time we have listened all the reports dear um like actually colleagues we are very very grateful for you to take part yes in the first uh let's say chapter of our story yes now i wish you to have uh, a good lunch and see you after lunch at 2 p.m sharp всім смачного так побачимося після обіду на другій частині о другій годині дякуємо thank you very much thank you thank you all yes bye bye take care Thank you. It was a pleasure seeing you all.
Любов Степаніна, ви мене чуєте? Доброго дня. А ну включіть мікрофон, бо він у вас виключений. Ми протестуємо зв'язок зараз з вами. Пробуйте включити мікрофон. Раз, раз, раз. О, чути супер. мене? Так, да, вас чути, все прекрасно. Хорошо. Все добре, чудово, чудово. У нас там був маленький збій, але ну, буває, це технології. Ми трішки у мене перед... був. Ну, ні, ні, у всіх, у всіх. Там просто щось з зумом якийсь був збій. А, ну, а я думала, це тільки в мене. Щось. Ні, ні, якщо щось таке буде, нічого страшного, перепідключаємося, це буває. Навантаження велике, просто конференція йде пару секцій, і буває, буває збій, тому угу. все, все нормально. Хорошо. Ну, чудово. Добре, тоді, значить, ще пару хвилин у нас є обіду. Як ви першу частину слухали? Трохи послухала. А потім відключилося ж. А, ну, нічого страшного. Геології у нас мало на секції, але нічого страшного. А ну спробуйте виключити мікрофон. Виключіть, а ну, а ну виключіть мікрофон, так, щоб я бачив, що ви. О, супер. Все. Чудово. Як тепер на конференцію попасти? Що ви маєте на увазі? Бо я зараз у вас бачу, а конференцію не бачу. А ще, вона ще не почалася. Зараз у нас обідня перерва, тому презентації а, немає. А, ну, ди, от дивіться, да, от дивіться, я зараз спробую запустити презентацію. От, а, ну, дивіться, ви бачите картинку? Бачу, але це не моя ж. Так, да, це, ну, це я, зап... я, я запустив. Ага, бачу. Тобто бачите, так? Да? Ну все, а тепер так. я зупиняю. Угу. Угу. Тоді можна відключитися до скількох обід? Е, обід до другої години. Е, і ага. ваша доповідь... Е, зараз, секундочку, я вам скажу по трій годині. Ваша ну, там було 14. Зараз, зараз, зараз. Ваша в 14.45, приблизно в 14.45. То буде читати та людина друга, так? Да? Так, да, так. Да. Буде презентацію ми запустимо. Вона вже є записана, ваша презентація. Ви тільки відповіді на запитання, якщо виникнуть. І все. Добре. Домовились. Угу. Хорошо. Анастасія, ви готові? Я вже своє пройшла. Ні, ну... Це чудово. Ні, я думаю, все буде добре, то... Все буде супер. 
Теодозія Михайлівна, я вас вітаю. Yes, of course. Окей. Три хвилини і починаємо. Так, звичайно. Добре. Доброго дня. Greetings, dear colleagues. And I think we start our section. And, okay, we continue our meeting with the framework of the fourth international conference on sustainable futures environmental technologies, social and economic matters. Uh, and welcome to the second part of the section eight. Uh, this section uh, includes in wall, uh, innovative approaches for solving environmental issues, uh, environmental pollution and uh, sustainable development, uh, environmental risk ass assessment and sustainable development sustainable environmental and environmental management uh, and uh, uh, my name is Theodor Yatsishin today I and my colleagues uh, Andrew Yatsishin will lead this section and a little about myself I'm a professor at the Department of Environmental Protection Technology of ivano frankivsk National Technical University of Oil and Gas and um, uh, uh, my co colleagues uh, Andrei Yatsishin represent the Institute of Environmental Geochemistry of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine and uh, before start um, 
now some formalities. Uh, we ask you to follow the regulations. Uh, presentations, please, up to 10 minutes and five minutes questions and answers. Um, remember that my language of this conference is English, so please try to ask and answer questions in English. And uh, this is also an opportunity to ask questions and give answers in, uh, via chat. Um, and uh, we also ask all participants to keep their mi microphones turned off uh, during the presentation. And uh, well, let's start. Okay. And uh, first report on the topic application on of environmental biomonitoring in environmental risk management of the full and energy complex uh, the speaker is natalia glibovitska please Congratulate workshop participants. We are glad that in this difficult period for Ukraine, we have the opportunity to report at this conference. We want to present a report on the topic application of environmental biological monitoring in environmental risk management of the fuel and energy complex. Every year, there is an increase in the consumption of oil, natural gas, and electricity in the world due to constant urbanization and technogenesis. In particular, only in Ukraine for domestic needs by 2030, oil consumption is predicted to increase by 1.5 times, coal by 2 times, and electricity by 2.2 times. Each element of the fuel and energy complex belongs to the category of environmental hazards and has a negative impact on the environment, including a direct and indirect impact on the health. These objects are a source of chemical and physical pollution or local regional and global levels of air, soil, surface, and underground water, the cost of climate change, the greenhouse effect, acid rain, smoke, global warming, as well as the reduction of biological diversity. In addition to a number of chemicals toxic to the environment, such as heavy metals, petroleum products, acid oxides, the level of electromagnetic noise and vibration pollution in the environment, increases during the operation of fuel and energy complex facilities. The main objectives of research, to establish the environmental policy principles of the fuel and energy complex, which would create conditions for preventing the consequences of its influence, to propose the concept of environmental risk management for the fuel and energy complex objects, to conduct a taxonomic and biomorphic plants characterization, under the pollution conditions from the Bushton Thermal Power Station. To evaluate the types of vegetation cover diversity, its vital state distribution in the territory around one of the largest industrial enterprises of the fuel and energy complex of Ukraine, the Bushton Thermal Power Plant. To identify the most promising plant indicators of the territory's ecological state around the Bushton Thermal Power Station, with the aim of introducing them into the system of ecological monitoring of territories located near powerful energy facilities. According to the date of the Department of Labor Protection, environmental and industrial policy of NAFTA gas of Ukraine intensive work is currently underway in the direction of integration into the European energy community. The specified activity will minimize environmental risk during production activities and increase the level of environmental safety. Such positive trends will provide an opportunity to improve the company's international image and increase investment attraction. The spheres of influence considered within uh, the framework of the HSE policy are of primary importance for the fuel and energy industry. And compliance with the guiding principles of safety and environmental protection is mandatory and dictated by the internal policy of most corporations. The implementation of the HSE policy makes it possible to define the principles by which operations are carried out and risks are controlled throughout the industrial cycle. It shows the process of risk assessment and management in the system of HSE. 
parameters and methods of environmental risk determination, possible natural indicators of damage, that is the number of victims and destroyed objects, the amount of the lost harvest, possible dimensions of the natural resources, deterioration quality, ecosystem degradation, the possible level natural environments pollution, environmental risk assessment, which is predictive in nature, is carried out by three main methods, methods of analogy, comparison with other similar objects, and the comparison is made according to the same parameters, according to statistical data based on similar phenomena that have already happened in a theoretical way that is maintained by mathematical modeling. In order to determine the optimal method of environmental risk assessment, it is necessary to take into account the origin of negative impact factors, processes in the ecological system that suffer damage, the final stage of the ecosystem. Depending on the level, there are features of environmental risk analysis which are presented in the table. The above indicates the need for an integrated approach to ecological and economic risk assessment at the cross-border level. The risk assessment methodology in the spatial context should be based on the compliance of its principles with European directives and be oriented towards the transformation of national environmental protection legislation. On the slide is presented the concept of risk management or the fuel and energy context. The research was carried out under the influence of the Bursten Thermal Power Station located in the Van Francisco region, within a radius of up to one kilometer from the source of pollution, seven monitoring sites with an area of 25 meter square meter have been laid. The species composition of phytocyanosis abundance, family membership, and life forms are analyzed within each site. All types of plants are divided into three groups depending on the constancy coefficient value. The constancy class of each species is determined according to the scheme. Under the influence of Bushland Thermal Power Station, 45 species of herbaceous plants and one tree species belonging to 18 families are reported in the monitoring areas. The dominant family is Asteroatia, represented by 17 species, Fabatia and Poatia by five species each. The family Hippericatia is represented by three species of plants, Rosatia, Plantaginatia, and Tapiatia by two species. The rest of the families in the monitoring areas have one representative of the plant species each. In the conditions of the monitoring sites, a relatively uniform diversity of plant cover is noted with the lowest phytocyanotic diversity, 63%. The number of plant species varies between 10 and 16, the number of families between 5 and 9. Uh, Phytocyanotic diversity and the bush thermal power station influence is represented by all classes of constancy. The fifth class of constancy includes two species of Achillea millefolium and Tichorium impibus, which are expedient to use in phytomonitoring of complex pollution areas from the fuel and energy complex facilities. The species Artemisia vulgaris, Lotus corniculatus, Dalcus carota, have medium biological indicative potential, and the species Medica gossativa, Trifolium protense, Centaura yasea, Erigerum annus, Arctium tomentosum, Hipericum perforatum, have a low monitoring capacity. Half of the species belong to the first class of constancy, so they cannot be used for biological indicative purposes. Plants that can be used as indicators of environmental condition under uh, Bushtin thermal power station influence. The fuel and energy complex exert a constant influence on the environment components, working personnel, and the population of the surrounding territories, which obliges these enterprises to systematically apply environmental risk management and develop an effective environmental policy for this industry. The basis for the effective environmental management formation of the enterprises is the of the uh, HSE policy, which in the first place determines the provision of safe working conditions and preservation of health and minimization of the environmental impact. The concept of environmental risk management in the field is presented. Among the environmental risk assessment parameters in the condition of the fuel and energy complex, the deterioration of the natural resource quality and the ecosystem degradation and the pollution possible levels of natural environments are highlighted. 
the biological indicative potential of Achillea millifolium and Tichorium in tables under the influence of pollution from the bush ten thermal power station is established. It is established that only 10% of all fetal cyanosis types that exist under the influence of the industrial enterprise show high resistance to pollution under the operation conditions of the bush ten thermal power station. Significant diversity of plant species in the area of the enterprise influence indicate the natural potential of this ecosystem vegetation for self-preservation. However, the small representativeness of plant species indicates a significantly weakened reproductive potential in stressful resistance conditions. In general, in unfavorable growth conditions, plants direct uh, energy resources to self-maintenance and the processes of self-reproduction in these conditions of existence are suppressed. Thank you for attention. Dear colleague, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, think, uh, who, who has questions? Maybe somebody has questions. Uh, Anastasia, please. Okay, I have two questions. So first, what plant species are the most promising uh, bioindicators in your work? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, according to obtained uh, results, uh, the most uh, promising biological indicators uh, on our uh, territory that was examined are two species. They are Achillea millifolium and Cichorium intibus that are respectively represented on 86 and 100 uh, percent examined plots and uh, that belong to the fifth vitality um, class. So they can be used as biological indicators of these territories. Thank you. And next, what methodology is used to identify the phytocenosis diversity of the studied area? Uh, thank you for your question very much. Uh, our methodology is based on the division of all plants into three uh, examined groups. Uh, the first group um, uh, are represented by plants that um, have the highest uh, constancy persistence. Uh, the second group um, is represented by plants that uh, have um, uh, medium capacity of constancy on all uh, examined areas. And uh, the third group is plants who have the lowest uh, capacity to exist under unfavorable uh, stressful conditions of environment. And also uh, all plants were divided into five classes. The first class is represented by plants that are represented on the 20% of all examined plots. The second class is uh, represented by plants uh, that are uh, present on 24, uh, 21, 40% uh, of all uh, plots. The third class, 41, 60% of all plots. Fourth, uh, fourth class um, by 61, 80%, and the last fifth uh, class of vitality is represented by 81, 100% of all exper experimented plots. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Anastasia, for uh, your questions, and thank you, Natalia, for your answers. Maybe somebody a uh, question? I, I have uh, one. Oh, Please, please, Andrew. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I have a question. Um, uh, what uh, is the influ influence of the Burstein uh, power plant uh, on the plant cover of the studied area? Uh, thank you for your question. Um, the influence of uh, Bush and Thermal Power uh, Station is uh, just uh, rather intensive because only 10% of all plant species existing on these territories um, can uh, resist uh, the stressful influence to this uh, physical pollution and chemical pollution uh, from uh, this uh, power station. And uh, also all other plants are very sensitive and uh, it reveals in the um, uh, decreased reproductive capacity of these plants. Thank you. And uh, have uh, one, li <laughs> one uh, little question. Um, have you uh, researched uh, the impact of the ash, ash and slag dump of the Burstein uh, power station on uh, vegetation? 
uh, not on in this uh, investigation, but I think that we will go on our research and uh, we will implement uh, this topic also in our for the investigations and we will examine this question. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Thank Natalia. You. And uh, um, I think uh, it is all questions. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. No, no. Okay. Oh. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please. Mm. Uh, yeah. Next. Uh, next, please. Um, uh, ne uh, we we try to uh, continue our uh presentations and next presentation uh, uh, on the topic air emission caused by uh, um, no no uh, uh, air quality impact of uh, war detected from the sentinel p 5p satellite over ukraine um and um, reporter is uh, lydia davebida and uh, now we know the air emission caused by Russia military aggression on the territory of Ukraine are uh, transported deposits and affect the territory of other states. Sometimes it is it, a distance of thousands of kilometers. That's why it is very important uh, topic nowadays. And please, Lydia, we try to uh, understand and uh, uh, try to uh, hear your presentation, please. Uh... Dear colleagues, let me share and present uh, the research air quality impacts of war detected from the Sentinel 5P satellite over Ukraine. The full scale war unleashed by Russia on Ukraine's territory caused irreparable loss of population, damage to the infrastructure, and destruction of the economy but also caused it a significant deterioration of the environment and the formation of significant ecological problems. Thus, as preliminary estimated, 900 uh, protected uh, natural territories of Ukraine have been affected and more than 1.2 million hectares uh, of whole uh, protected areas of Ukraine suffer from the uh, effects from the, of the war. As a result of shelling, uncontrolled forest fires occur and the amount of waste has increased cat uh, catastrophically. As a result of damage to the water supply infrastructure, 1.4 million people in Ukraine currently have no access to safe water. The state of atmospheric air is an important indicator of the ecological situation. The direct and indirect impact of active military operations through the bombing and boring on forest and industrial and energetic objects caused the formation of large volumes of pollutants in the atmosphere. It's obvious uh, that for general analysis and assessment of the impact of military uh, operations on air quality, it's necessary to use background monitoring data to display an entire perspective of air quality change during the war. The solution to this problem is complicated by the difficult or completely closed access to the environmental data due to the security issues or lack of funding for systematic monitoring. The purpose of this study is to assess the change in the volume of the main atmospheric pollutants over the territory of Ukraine compared to the pre-war period using open data of remote monitoring and geoinformation and cloud technologies. 
Global monitoring results with a spatial resolution near one square kilometers, which were obtained with the Sentinel 5P Tofomi satellite instruments during 2021 and 2022, were used as an input data for the study. The offline versions of air quality data sets of Topomi products, including the density of uh, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, uh, ozone, formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, and uh, unitless aerosol absorbed index, uh, which represent pollution by the absorbing aerosols, uh, were used in this study. Google Earth Engine, a cloud computing platform, which is a modern, powerful, open tool for solving environmental monitoring problems, was used as an environment for data preparation and analysis. The study includes the following stages. Uh, firstly, uh, downloading of survey data. Uh, second, filtering and clipping uh, data for the research area. In our case, it was all Ukraine. Uh, then, calculation and mapping of general uh, monitoring results, um, uh, average annual values of uh, pollutants density uh, for 2021 and 2022 year. Uh, calculation of average monthly values of air pollutants for this year, for the years, and also construction of time series, and loading and saving spatial temporal data for future research. For example, for calculation of zonal statistics uh, in QGIS environment. The obtained results so show, uh, showed a decrease in the average annual density value of main pollutants in 2022 compared to 2021. Uh, decreasing for uh, nitrogen dioxide uh, over Ukraine was near 2%. Uh, for carbon monoxide, uh, decreasing was um, uh, more than 11%. For sulfur dioxide, uh, we obtained uh, decreasing uh, uh, more than uh, 32%. For uh, formaldehyde, uh, the decreasing was 1.5% uh, for uh, whole territory of Ukraine. And also average monthly values were calculated separately for 2021 and 2022 using JavaScript language tools in Google Earth Engine. Uh, to evaluate and compare the temporal dynamics of the considered variables. Uh, it's obvious that with a general tendency to increase the amount of the considered pollutants, the seasonal patterns of its variability were preserved uh, during 2022. Zonal statistics performed in QGIS allowed us to show spiral patterns of pollutant distributions over Ukrainian regions. It should also be realized that pollution has become more dispersed for the territory of Ukraine. In contrast to the main pollutants, uh, density of uh, ozone uh, was increased uh, near, um, uh, on near 1.5 percent uh, and also seasonal uh, variations during 2022 was uh, similar to the uh, seasonal variations in the previous year. 
the average annual value of uh, aerosol absorbing index uh, in 2022 also increased by uh, more than 55% compared to 2021. Uh, it is ev uh, evidence of uh, due to the huge concentration of aerosol, smoke and dust in the atmosphere resulting from explorings and fires. Evidently, the decrease in emissions of pollutants into the atmosphere and therefore the content in the air is connected with the shutdown of enterprises and is a reflection of the negative impact of military aggressions on the Ukrainian economy. Emissions of specific substances occur as a result of explosions which settle in soils, surface waters, migrate into bottom sediments and groundwater. Thus, a necessary step will be to conduct a diagnostic assessment and analysis of the specific pollutants content, in particular heavy metals, cancerogens and else. Uh, with the environment of the developed investigated methods on individual environmental components. Uh, the study of this distribution of pollutants showed declining annual mean uh, values of the main pollutants and unfortunately the damage to the environment, infrastructure and human health have already been done and continues to take place in Ukraine and other countries. The obtained results are clear indications of the armed conflict impact on the air quality, the health of the populations and the environment in general. They are important for conducting audits and uh, designing an environmental monitoring system for assessing losses due to the military aggression and post-war environmental restoration. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Lydia. And uh, unfortunately, the, record, uh, the sounds was uh, rather quiet, but the slides demonstrated the research uh, conduction very good. And um, maybe somebody has questions, please, participants. I have two questions. Can I? Uh, yes, please, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, uh, if uh, if you have uh, air pollution data of the first par part of uh, tw uh, 2023, uh, how does it differ uh, for the previous year's data? Uh, thank you for your question. They are very uh, relevant uh, because uh, monitoring data is available on the cloud platform of free access after a few days from the obtaining. And so we can see the contemporary situation and uh, I have known that it's very similar to results of the previous year, I mean to the 2022. And the uh, density of pollutants, ozone and uh, aerosol absorbent index um, are close to the analogic values uh, of the last year and um, also have the same monthly dynamics. Uh, therefore, in my opinion, we can see about some uh, fixed situation with air quality in Ukraine uh, under war conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, um, have you uh, compared uh, the uh, received pollution data with uh, the data received by the Central uh, Geophysical Observatory uh, or uh, the other atmospheric uh, air, po uh, air monitoring uh, networks? Um, thank you for your questions. Uh, it's uh, mm the next logical step of this research uh, because i consider the density of pollutants uh, molecules in the troposphere uh, which can be observed by uh, satellite sensors uh, 
uh, it's not con concentration. And if we would like upgrade to the concentration of a pollutant, we need to take uh, in to account meteorological data such as wind velocity, temperature, precipitation, uh, and others, and also uh, monitoring data of ground station. Um, for example, as far as I know, the uh, archive of uh, data of uh, such organization as EcoCity uh, allow uh, such uh, kinds of data. And uh, in this research, uh, only general trends and uh, region anomalies were found. And uh, in the future, we can choose the territory with the most significant change and uh, for correlation analysis and creating some prognostication models uh, using uh, data of uh, meteorological uh, and uh, uh, ground uh, monitoring station uh, for, uh, for more effective uh, uh, assessment of air quality. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, thank you. Uh, can, uh, can this satellite uh, measure the level of uh, radiation pollution? Uh, uh, I think... Um, Mm, you can see it uh, uh, on uh, the uh, platform of uh, Copernicus, uh, uh, on Copernicus monitoring data. Uh, yes, as far as I know, they um, provide some uh, geophysician uh, data, uh, but uh, I have never used them. Uh, if you would like, I can share the by the chat uh, the link uh, to this platform and uh, you can to, to see mm -hmm. by uh, yourself thank you for your okay. answer i have one question may I? okay please <clears throat> uh, as I remember correctly, you said that uh, formaldehyde pollution uh, was decreased by one person uh, in average. Uh, but uh, how great are the satellite uh, measures of this concent concentration of pollution? Um, the uh, spatial resolution is. Uh, enough low. Uh, it is uh, near one kilometer, as I can say, uh, but uh, the, uh, in general, uh, it's enough for uh, some regional and uh, national scale of investigation. But uh, also uh, density, the uh, error of density of molecules of pollutants is depend on many uh, factors such as um, cloud, such as um, cloud, uh, winter, and meteor, meteor data. So uh, these questions about uh, meteorological, using meteorological data was very uh, correctly and relevant because uh, for more uh, effective uh, models and research, we need to use this, uh, uh, these factors and uh, because the uh, error assessment uh, will depend on many uh, different additional uh, additional parameters you think uh, no can you tell uh, what precision of uh, what precision of uh, measures the pollution was in this data Maybe the precision was some uh, five percent, and uh, when we say that decrease in one percent is so... uh, uh, is not uh, significant. Uh, as I can uh, see this another in this research, uh, it wasn't uh, unfortunately Ukrainian researchers. Uh, it was uh, from was a scientist from uh, China, from Turkey, and uh, they uh, has the similar uh, results, but they uh, didn't uh, 
uh, didn't consider uh, all territory of Ukraine. Uh, it was just uh, it was just um, some uh, it was Kiev and it was uh, part of Ukraine where uh, military military aggression was more significant. Yeah, and uh, they uh, I must say that they uh, obtained the similar results, and it. Um, Mm, what about the uh, this uh, result? They uh, showed the general trends for uh, for all uh, region for Ukraine, and uh, I can uh, I agree with you that in some uh, uh, for some regions uh, the anomalies in one person uh, is uh, not significant, but for uh, east of Ukraine and for uh, south of Ukraine, where the um, uh, the most uh, aggression, the, the most military destruction, uh, well. Uh, were obtained, uh, we have more significant change. So, uh, for generally, for a general uh, trend assessment in regional scale and for uh, national scale, uh, this uh, data, uh, this uh, satellite uh, results obtained by uh, results obtained by satellite uh, is uh, is enough. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much, uh, Lydia. And uh, by the way, uh, last uh, some, uh, last week I take a part in Six Space Resource Conference, uh, and this conference was in Krakow, in Agha University. And these uh, problems and these uh, um, technologies, space technologies, was. Uh, uh, um, was presented in this conference uh, and it is uh, very interesting for me thank you very much for your presentation and uh, i think uh, no question because <laughs> a lot of questions was uh, a few minutes before and now please uh, next um, presentation and uh, uh, it's uh, <laughs> Uh, Natalia Hlibovetska, speaker again. Thank you for your activity. And the topic of the presentation, the impact of electromagnetic pollution on the phytocenotic diversity of the Transcordon region. Please. Congratulate workshop participants. We are glad that in this difficult period for Ukraine, we have the opportunity to report at this conference. We want to present a report on the topic, the impact of electromagnetic pollution on the phytocyanotic diversity of the transport and region. The electric power industry is a source of noise, vibration, and electromagnetic pollution of the environment. Electromagnetic radiation is considered the cause of chronic fatigue syndrome, which was diagnosed in people at the end of the 80s of the 20th century. Under electromagnetic pollution, the decrease in reproductive potential, higher mortality, and increased migrations among animals are observed. Plants are the primary technogenic influence recipients, and they reflect the level of environmental anthropogenic transformation. The plant community's phytocenotic diversity is a key market that reflects the ecological state of the ecosystem its balance and stability. Vibration pollution affects the physiological qualities of plant seeds, which leads to their germination degrees. That's why the issue of the electric power industry facilities impact on natural phytocyanosis has not yet been studied and requires the attention of ecologists. The purpose of our research is the analysis of the plant's community species diversity under the influence of electric power facilities in the cross-border region of Ukraine and Romania. The main tasks of the research are to analyze the probable impact of the electromagnetic field on plants, 
to investigate the species composition of dipocyanosis, to study the dominant plant species in the areas affected by power plants and to find out species that could be used as biological indicators of the electromagnetic pollution. The research was conducted on the cross-border territory of Ukraine and Romania in the monitoring areas under the influence of electric power facilities. The monitoring network included 46 points in the immediate vicinity of the radiation source, a radius of 50 meters. The level of electromagnetic and noise pollution was measured. An analysis of the species diversity of phytocyanosis within each monitoring point was carried out. Plants were photographed on a test plot with an area of 25 square meters. When the phytocyanosis had the form of a narrow strip, the transects of four square meters were laid. The taxonomic characteristics of each species and life form were determined according to the generally accepted method. Monitoring points were established in the next locations. Yaremche, Yasinia, Rahi, Dilove, Tiachi, Teresva, Nizhny Absha, Sobotvenom, Sokernetsya, Hust, Lipcha, Nizhny Bestri, Hydroelectric Power Station on the Terebla River, Pyshki, Shevchenkova, Stari Bohorachane, Bushten. The phytocyanotic diversity was determined as a percentage at each monitoring point. The plant diversity in the monitoring area with the largest number of plant species was taken as 100%. The coefficient and class of constancy of each plant species were determined according to the following classification. All plants were divided into five vitality classes and three representative classes, high, middle, and low. The results of phytocyanotic diversity studies under electric power plants in France demonstrate the following. The largest number of plant species is represented on the wind power plant territory in Shachankova village, 34 species, and on Bohorochan experiment area, area, 32 species. The lowest number of plant species, four species, is represented on one of the experimental sites in Yeremcha town, and on the territory of the private sector in Tiachi village. By high phytocyanotic diversity, more than 75% is characterized at the first experimental site in Yeremcha town, the experimental site in Dilova village and Nizhnya Tessa village. In the areas affected by electrical installations, 10 of the 47 identified families are the most common. Starace represented at 45 monitoring points, Kabatze 39 points, Rosace 26 points, Apiace 33 points, Rosboace 26 points, Lamiace 25 points, Ranunculace 24 points, Urticace 16 points. Plantaginace, 23 points, Polygonace, 17 points. All other families are marked by a low representation in the biological monitoring system of electric power facilities impact. They are present in the number of one to seven monitoring points. In the areas impacted by electrical installations, largest number of species is represented by the families Asterace, Rosace, and Poace. The Lamiace family is represented by 14 plant species, Apiace 12, Pabats and Polygonace 9 species, Ranunculace 7 species. Other families are represented by from 1 to 5 plant species. Among 196 identified plant species, 179 species belong to the first class of vitality. Uh, 12 species to the second and 5 species to the third class of so vitality, which in percentages is 91, 6.5 and 2.5% respectively. Herbaceous plants dominate in the all investigated points except for the area on the edge of Tachi village, and they make up from 74 to 100% of all life plants forms. This is explained by the high level of herbaceous form survival due to the peculiarities of structure, physiology, and individual development. Shrubs are represented in, eight, in 11 out of 46 monitoring points, and they make up from 5 to 25 percent of all life forms, and trees in 20 points and make up from 4 to 75 percent. Among 196 identified plant species, species belonging to the third class of 
vitamin D have the highest representativeness. Achillea millifolium, trifolium pretense, trifolium repens, talcus carota, and balisparenis are the dominant species represented in 46, 48, and 50 percent of the experimental points, respectively. The second vitality class includes the following 10 species, Tarxacum officinale, Centaura yasa, Lantaglia lanza oleata, Sonfus arvensis, Calemagrostis epigeus, Tactelis gliomerata, Ranunculus acris, Menta longifolia, Tamacetum vulgare, Artemisia vulgaris, Urtica dioica, Lotus corniculatus. These species are represented in the amount of 20-40% of experimental points, are characterized by the intermediate biological indicative opportunities and can be used in monitoring studies of electric power facilities impact on the environment. 196 plant species were detected at monitoring points under the influence of electric power facilities in the Ukraine Romania Transcordon region. Among them, 179 species belong to the first vitality class, 12 species to the second, and 5 species to the third vitality class, which is percentage is 91, 6.5, and 2.5% respectively. Under the noise and electromagnetic pollution in plants, 17 plant species reveal middle representativeness and 180 species low representativeness. Among 47 identified families, Astraza, Rosatza, and Poatza families are represented by the largest number of species. In all research points, with the exception of one site, herbaceous plants dominate, which make up from 74 to 100 percent of all plants' life forms. Shrubs are represented in 11 monitoring sites out of 46. They make up from 5 to 25 percent of all life forms and trees in 20 sites and make up from 4 to 75 percent. Achillea millifolium, trifolium pretense, daucus carota belong to the third vitality class and are represented by 46, 48, and 50 percent in the experimental points, respectively. These species reveal the highest biological indication capacity can be used in monitoring studies of the existence environmental state under electromagnetic and noise influence. Raxacum officinale, Centaura, Yasa, Atlantagola, and Saulata, Sonfus, Arvensis, Calemagrostis, Epigeus, Dactylis, Gliomerata, Ranunculus, Acris, Menta, Longifolia, Tamacetum vulgare, Artemisia vulgaris, Urtica dioica, belong to the second vitality class and are characterized by the intermediate logical indicative opportunity. The remaining 180 species belong to the first class of vitality. They cannot be used as indicators of the ecosystem ecological state under electric power facilities in France. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Natalia. And around us, there are a large number of electricity facilities, and we don't even think about this influence. Uh, Colleagues from uh, Ivano Frankis National Technical University of Oil and Gas conducted very interesting research. Maybe some question from the uh, our from our participants, please. Um, is it some question? May I start? Uh, please, Volodymyr. Uh, did you measure the level of electromagnetic pollution? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, yes, we measured, but not me, because uh, we were um, working in a group team, and uh, this uh, research was conducted in summer 2022. Uh, but um, the but uh, scientists who measured uh, um, these parameters of physical pollution, of course, they did their part of work, and I was responsible for uh, plant work, so for collecting plants and uh, for um, examining their vitality and distribution and species uh, resistance. So this this question is more to my colleagues. But, um, I understand, thank you. Uh, but uh, maybe you remember what uh, values were conducted? Uh, um, well, uh, and, uh, and how this uh, value compare with the maximum possible for population? Uh -huh. uh, yes, uh, in general, uh, there is a, a 
um, straight uh, correlation uh, between direct correlation and dependence uh, between the level of uh, physical uh, pollution, uh, the level of noise and vibration pollution, uh, and also electromagnetic pollution, the in, uh, and uh, the um, level of distribution of plants and their vitality, uh, because um, with the increasing the influence of physical pollution on plants, uh, their distribution is decreased proportionally and mainly it occurs in the uh, decreased reproductive potential of plants so they don't have opportunity to distribute their seeds normally and they seeds their seeds don't germinate and um, these populations are very suppressed unfortunately and uh, because in literature there are not so many information about the influence of physical pollution that's why we decided to do it and to start this interesting talk Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, okay, I saw that Anastasia raised her hand, but I uh, read the chat. And yeah, I read her in chat because uh, we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> okay, please, Natalia, uh, can you read question from the chat? Okay. What is the division? Uh -huh. Okay, please. Uh... One moment. Yes, sir. What, what is, is the division of plants spaces of the studied area? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, the division of plants uh, looks uh, the next way. Uh, so among 196 species, um, 179 species uh, belong to uh, the first consistency class, uh, so they cannot be used in biological monitoring because they are very, very sensitive and uh, have a small reproduction and uh, presence on this area. Uh, 12 species to the second uh, class of constancy, and uh, they can be used in monitoring studies, uh, but they occupy the medium uh, position between the sensitive and biological indicator species, and five species belong to uh, the um, highest class of constancy, the third class and they are recommended to use in biological indicator monitoring of um, uh, territories that are under the influence of physical electromagnetic pollution thank you very much uh maybe okay i have uh, some question please uh, uh tell me please natalia you know, what plant spaces are the most suitable for biomonitoring of the physical pollution uh, of the studies area uh, thank you for your question uh, according to obtained results, uh, five plant species can be used uh, widely in biological monitoring of the areas influenced under the physical pollution of electromagnetic installations. And these species are uh, Achillea millifolium, Daucus carota, Trifolium pratense, Bellis perennis, and uh, uh, Trifolium repens. Uh, so uh, these uh, species are represented in the most uh, experimental plots and, of course, can be used in this case. Okay, and uh, as some previous investigation of the physical pollution influence on plants? Um, not so much information as uh, there is in literature, uh, because uh, there are only fragmentary studies of the influence of electromagnetic and vibration pollution on plant communities, uh, and mainly there is only some small little information concerning the negative influence of physical pollution on seed germination, so it is um, uh, known that uh, physical pollution uh, harms and negatively influence uh, the uh, germination of seeds and it uh, maintains in the lowest degree in the um, decrease of plant uh, reproductive uh, potential. Thank you. Okay, and uh, please tell me last question. I understand that the research was conducted within the framework of the cross-border project. Is this project ongoing or has it already ended? Mm -hmm. uh, this project uh, is uh, already ended, uh, but uh, it was conducted uh, during, it was um, uh, implemented during uh, two years and we hopefully 
uh, try to conduct new maybe new projects with our Romanian colleagues or maybe uh, with Polish colleagues as it will be possible for us. Thank you for complete answers. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, please, uh, next uh, presentation, because we have uh, time for, for, for next <laughs> presentation. Um, uh, the topic of the next presentation of the coherence of the formation of containing and or containing precambrian formations or echo pavlograd shooting zone of the ukrainian shield and uh, please lubov osmachko is presented this presentation a report on the topic is offered for your attention on the coherence of the formation of containing and or containing precabrine formation or echovo pavlograd searchers zone of the Ukrainian shield. The work was carried out in uh, con uh, connection with the solution of the problem of structural control of the mineralization of metallic minerals within the boundaries of the Ukrainian shield. Data on the structural and material organization of the North Tersen Fold that forms the contained metamorphogenic formation of the northern part of the Orichovo Pavlograd structure zone have been systemized. On slide second, um, the Orichovo Pavlograd structure zone visible dot, dotted line is highlighted and uh, the area of detailed works with the blue polygon is marked. The Orichovo Pavlograd structure zone, OPSZ, of the Ukrainian Shield. U.S. ash is clearly distinguished from the adjacent megablocks, Middle Dnieper and Prizovsky by geological, structural and geophysical parameters. In the first approximation, the OPSA is a sub-vertical monocline of sub-meridional extension. The monocline is formed with the lens pad like bodies of different size of uh, tunnelate composition, tunnelate uh, genesis, uh, uh, darned biotite genesis, feldespar, and ferruginous uh, quartzes, uh, amphibolites, uh, uh, granites. All of them subconcordately uh, overlap each other and heavy. A similar bed position. According to the data of predecessors, uh, the isotopic age in the range of 3.6 to 1.9 billion years is now of the geological bodies of the old PSA. The deposit and our occurrence of iron, gold, uranium, source uranium, and other minerals within the boundaries of the old PSA are known. The compass of geological structure and geochronological data indicates uh, predecessors. Uh, the multi-phase formation of the Oriho Pavlohar suture zone in the Precabria. Uranium source mineral, uh, mineralization within according to the data of predecessors of the bordering of the North Tersim folded uh, from the layer of schist uh, and the mil, uh, milonize, chloride micaceous quartz among the micaceous quartz of the of Chan formation in localis, loca, uh, localized. Uh, this is uh, the considerable work of provision, provisional researchers regarding in the condition of formation of or occurrence and deposit of the studied parts of the U.S. ash and the uh, regularities of the allocation questions remain open. The purpose of this work was uh, to clarify the structural patterns of um, uh, fighting and condition for the formation of virus, promising for uranium sourcing and some other mineral within the limits of the OPSZ. I used to study the promise of our bearing precabrine structure of the uh, U.S. ash for a comprehensive approach. It involves the processing and analysis of source information, geological and geophysical data from production reports and published materials, field documentation, of kinematic indicators and structure mapping using methods of structural and um, parogenic 
genetic analysis. So that uh, takes into account the morphological and spatial characteristic uh, of this location formation, the material composition L, the PT condition of formation, information about the age and the CQ of, of formation. The also of the work information on the petrostructural organization of the OPC they within its northern part uh, additionally systemized. The systemization cons uh, consisted in the processing of actual, um, actual material regarding the placement of striation, uh, line RAT, and also metamorphogenic structure using the Sterilnet 2.46 program, as well as in the consideration of the North Tersin folded form according to the principle of the hierarchy of uh, geostructures. Field of seeking um, is on in slide eight and nine. Uh, the special uh, uh, arrangement of metamorphogenic uh, structure of the respective generation are reflected. In this location structure of the first generation were formed by mineral parag uh, paragonesis of the granulate facing of metamorphism. Structures of generation three are um, rep uh, three are represent of mineral aggregates of the amphibolite phases. Their age is tied to a time step of about 2.8 billion years. Similar structures of generation 5 formed by mineral uh, paragonesic of the green sheets facing of metamorphism are tied to a time step of about 9.1 uh, Point nine million years placement of post metamorphogenic dislocation formations on the steroid grams is not carried out because they emitted the elements of the occurrence of all deformation. Uh, thus, the same structure and material paragonesis is manifest uh, uh, in all rock types of geological bodies within study part of the OPSA. There are indicated in terms of special position number of generation of structural elements, PT condition of implementation. Therefore, all the study rocks varies of the OPC. They were formed in a, a similar uh, and gradual way. The structural and material transformation in their volumes took place uh, cooperative or simultaneously. In several stages, in a significantly sheer tectonic condition against the background of uh, regressive change in the PT parameters of the environment. Uh, the North States folded from containing granular source mineralization at also macro level by sub annular and liner plate like component, uh, components. Slide 9 right is represented. Elements of the occurrence of the later are subordinate to such elements of RPC they as a whole. At the middle level, both components line and sub ring of the North Stars and Fold from are formed by concordance plate uh, lens like geological bodies with the uh, depositional de elements there are similar to those for micro components. Geological bodies of the middle levels, both in the line and sub ring components of the North Stars and Fold form, uh, uh, striated and the uh, chistosity. The external uh, part. Uh, Patterns are determined by the presence of mineral aggregates as it varies in the degree of elongation and the size of mineral grains and degrees of metamorphism from granulity to green shift face, uh, faces. And therefore, all structure man, uh, minerals and H attributes of the North person for the forms are um, mutually consist. Um, All the above shows uh, uh, that the line and sub annular components of the North Sterson fall form, as well as the continent geological bodies formed in uh, it relate uh, in several stages. Hence, the line and macro components of the North Sterson fall form is a zone of secondary bending and schistosity of stage 3, 4 Sterson fall from. Mm. Uh, and it's pole in the paint of application of tectonic uh, compression forces. Um, the location of the uh, rota uh, rota uh, rotation axis of generation 4 and 5 is close to ver uh, ver vertical. Uh, 
And that is this follow from this data that the sub annular components of the North Terse follow from was created due to share a rotation of metamorphogenic thread in several stages. A layer of schistos and milonizite chloride mica grasses among Mika source of the wolf chain formation containing uranium source mineral mineralization according to our data as a result of at least uh, the fourth stage of structure and uh, material transformation of the investigate fragment of the OPCZ. The transformation described about in the form of step by step model of the evolution of the structure material patterns of um, a fragment of the investigated crystalline, uh, yes. crystalline base have mm -hmm. been restored, and as a result of such an evolution, the creation of ore bearing uh, structure and in the last model of formation of single uranium source um, uh, respective structure created can be used in further research. Uh, the original Pablo Research Zone in the complex, uh, complex is location formation because it was formed in several stages of tectonic metamorphogenic in transformation of the crystalline base. The first five of them operate under um, PT condition from the granulated to green schist phase, uh, phases of metamorphism uh, and the rest at low temperature values. The North Terrace fall from is a highly Coherence dislocation structure formed under significantly shear tectonic condition is occupies uh, uh, the position of a shared rural structure, which was finally created uh, at the first and fifth stages of structural and material transformation of the precambrian base about 2.0 uh, 2 and 9.9 uh, billion years ago. The types of geni uh, genesis of the uranium and sorcerer uh, or clusters within uh, the OPCZ uh, corresponds to a tectonic um, metamorphic shown in slide 10 model can be used in further research in the search uh, in rest uh, restoration of or uh, prospective structure. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for presentation. Maybe some question. Who has question, please? Okay, maybe um, I have a question. Um, please um, tell me which of the geologies, tectonic, theoretical and practical works became the foundation for your research? Uh, are you able to answer? Answer. On the theoretical and practical achievements, mainly of Ivan Ivanovich Potalov and Oleg Igorich Slizov. Our research is basic. Thank you very much. And I have other questions, please. How were well the pressure and temperature uh, conduction of formation of the studies, dislocation structures determine, determines. Thank you for question. The PT condition of the formation of the investigation dislocation structure by mineral paragenesis were determined. After LZS OSH association of minerals is homage on the certain PT condition of the geological environment. Thank you. And I uh, see at the chat is some question from Vladimir. Uh, and uh, please, um, how do the present results, including the uh, idealized, idealized model that you mentioned contributes uh, to the exploration ex and uh, expansion of the uranium, thorium, mineralization potential and the mineral resource base for nuclear energy in Ukraine. And uh, 
Uh, Anastasia, can you uh, help uh, to translate uh, this uh, question? Як ці дослідження, в тому числі ідеалізована модель, можуть сприяти розвитку та розширенню уранного уранаторієвого мінералізаційного матеріалу потенціалу? та мінерально-сировинної вази для атомної енергетики в Україні. Якщо українською можна. Давайте спробуємо. То, цю модель застос... можна застосувати в пошуково-розвідувальних роботах безпосередньо в польових умовах, що відшукується такий структурний малюнок до кибрівських порід. То це фактично вже як калька, яку можна застосувати до того, що ми спостерігаємо в полі, і відслідкувати розміщення ну, перспективних ділянок на уронній дорі, які відзначені на цій схемі. Це відповідь. Дякую дуже Дякую. Окей, може, якісь питання. Okay. And uh, one last question, please. Uh, where magmatic and metasomatic phenomena manifested in the region you studied? Um, please, if you can. Thank you for question. If in the sense of mineral transformation and movements of substance then such phenomena were manifested, but they are completely subject to tectonic processes. That is the direction of movement and recrystallization of the substance, the special placements of nerve formation created in this way, and the PT condition of their formation were determined by the direction and intensity of application of tectonic forces. Thank you very much. Okay, so, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, start next presentation uh, of the topic ecological adaptation among spruce spatial along an environmental gradient in urban areas and reporter Elvira, uh, Elvira Fedorchuk. Uh, Please start. Allow me to present a report to your attention, ecological adaptations among spruce species along an environmental gradient in urban areas. Today, the state of the environmental in industrial cities is very critical, causes concern and requires practical measures to improve it. The conifers trees play an important role in improving the quality of the urban areas. In Kriverich, one of the largest industrial cities of Ukraine, the level of atmospheric air pollution significantly exceeds the limits. It is difficult for industrial conifers uh, to adapt to, to the urban technogenic environment of a large industrial step city. Considering on it, the objectives of the study were to screen a range of morphometric, physiological and biochemical parameters among spruce species in urban areas of Kriverich city and to the assess the ecological adaptations among spruce species along an environmental gradient in urban areas of Kriverich city. In our study, the 40, 14 year old uh, trees of uh, indigenous spruce species, Norway spruce, Pizzabis, and non native spruce species, Colorado blue spruce, uh, Pizzapungets, uh, Glauca, were investigated. A systematic random sampling design was used for selection of sampling sites. The territory of Kriverik, the botanical garden. 
uh, arboretum uh, was used uh, as the central sampling size one. The environmental imputed areas was divided into sub locations as low environmental impact sampling size two, three, moderate environmental impact sampling size four, five, six, and high in environmental impact sampling size seven, eight. All uh, research points were located at three Kyrgyz city districts, such uh, as Ternivsky, Pokrovsky, and Metalurgini. According to obtained results in uh, Kentral sites, the tree height of spruce species were more, and the diameter at breast height of spruce species were large than morphometric. Characteristic of same age spruce trees from environmental impact area stable one. In high env environmental impact areas, the means of tree height were lower than the background value by 30% uh, and 28% for Norway spruce and Colorado blue spruce, respectively. In this area, the means of uh, diameter at breast high were statistical significance lower than Cantrell by 21% and 16% uh, for Norway spruce and Colorado blue spruce, respectively. The vitality state is in Norway spruce trees were significantly lower in low environmental impact area by 15%, in moderate environmental impact area by 17, 18%, and in a high environmental impact area by 50%. Colorado blue spruce also showed differences in widely states, but uh, showed uh, a more smaller amplitude. The means of tree vitality was a statistical significance lower than the central value by 10%, 23%, and 40% in low, moderate in high environmental impact areas, respectively. As the needle chlorophyll concentration is an important parameter that is regularly uh, measured uh, as an in, uh, indicator of plant metabolism, plant stress, and of plants' current state in urban areas. It uh, has been found that maximum contents of chlorophyll uh, in needles uh, of uh, spruce species were in May in Kentral site. And the low chlorophyll A content in needles uh, of spruce species were found in September in high environmental impact area 0.58 mg per gram of weight weight in the 0.70 mg per gram of wet weight for Norway spruce and Colorado blue spruce respectively. This value were lower than Cantrell by 21% and 29%. Uh, in the course of five month studies was found a significant decline in the chlorophyll R content in needles of spruce species along an environmental gradient. Uh, but uh, in all environmental impact areas, the content of this pigment in the needles of Colorado blue spruce was a relative stability and higher than in the needles of Norway spruce. We hypothesize that uh, Norway spruce is more sensitive to environmental impact than a Colorado blue spruce. Uh, as in uh, previous case, the maximum contest of chlorophyll B in the needles of spruce species were in uh, May in Kentral site. The result of our investigation uh, clearly indicated that minimal contest of chlorophyll B in needles were found in September in high environmental impact area near coast uh, iron. Uh, smelting and steel smelting plants. At this site, uh, concentration of chlorophyll B was 0.29 mg per gram of wet weight in needles of Norway spruce and was 0.23 mg per gram of wet weight in needles of Colorado blue spruce. These uh, values were lower uh, than Cantrell by 15% uh, and 21% respectively. Uh, during five months of our uh, investigations, there was a significant uh, uh, decrease in the value of chlorophyll B concentration in the needles of both spruce species alone in 
uh, environmental gradient in Kriverich city urban areas. We imply that this uh, phenomenon uh, is determined uh, by distance from urban roads from or uh, mining and uh, processing uh, enterprises and from uh, metallurgical combine. The uh, conclusion were expressed during uh, we uh, the presentation. Please allow do not read them. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much. And uh, Elvira, I can see you. And maybe some have questions, please. Anastasia, would, please. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you choose species of the genus Pacea for your research? Uh, thank you for your <coughs> questions. Uh, for our study, we chose the species of the genus Pacea because uh, they are characterized by high potential activity year-round decorativeness uh, extractive color of the needles and ammon coniferous uh, they are the most common in various types uh, of uh, plantations in Krivi Reef. <clears throat> and one more. <laughs> How yeah. the morphometric parameters of spruce trees and the content of pigment in the needles of both spruce species uh, change along the environmental gradient? Thanks for your questions. <clears throat> uh, based on the obtained result, it uh, can be concluded uh, that spruce species is uh, affected by uh, envir environmental impact in Krivirik city urban areas. The ecological stress even an environmental gradient decrease the vitality and uh, photosynthetic activity of uh, the trees by 15 50%. Okay, my, uh, thank you, Anastasia, for your questions <clears throat> and uh, Elvira for your answers. And I have once uh, more questions. Uh, tell me, please, Elvira. Which of the spruces shows greater ecological tolerance and ecological adaptation? Uh, thanks for your questions. Uh, uh, our study demonstrated uh, that uh, Colorado blue spruce trees uh, exhibit greater ecological tolerance and ecological adaptations than uh, Norway spruce trees. Uh, Colorado blue spruce is less uh, sensitive uh, to environmental impact and have a better adaptive balance of um, pigment uh, content than Norway spruce. Um, our result confirm that uh, from a sustainable uh, development of the urban areas a perspective it is uh, necessary uh, to um, using the Colorado blue spruce for green plantations. Thank you, Elvira. Thank you. And uh, we try to follow the regulation, but the reports are very interesting, so questions arise. And um, thank you. Uh, and uh, so, um, uh, let's uh, start next uh, presentation. So, uh, considering the issues of uh, researching environmental problems, uh, attention was again drawn uh, to the consequences of Russia aggression in Ukraine. And the same time, in the territories where host um, hostilities are taking place and it's possible to observe only satellite da data. And that's why the next topic uh, is uh, satellite-based technology assessing Ukraine's ecology under the war. Uh, and uh, uh, reporter, please, Tatiana Oplachko, uh, we... Uh, 
here are you and please your presentation. Good day, I'm glad to be a participant in the conference and I would like to thank the organizers for the possibility to introduce in our research. My name is Tatiana Orlenko, I am working at the Scientific Center for Aerospace Research of the Earth. Today I'd like to talk about satellite-based technology accessing Ukraine's ecology under the wall. The ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine, which started in 2014, primarily occurs in eastern Ukraine. However, particularly intense combat operation occurs in the southeastern part of Ukraine within the Donetsk and Luhansk region, which have suffered extensive destruction. It is territory that we are now as Donetsk coal basin located, which has been in operating more than 150 years. Since the early 19th, restructuring the mine within the Donetsk deep, uh, basin began accompanied by the closure of uh, unprofitable mines. The predominant methods for mine closure is the wet conversation, which involves flooding them. This process has a significant impact on the surrounding environment. The flooding of mines leads to an increase in the groundwater levels and the submersion of substantial areas. As the mines are incorrected, uh, though underground workings, extensive areas contained industrial facilities and residential buildings have been uh, affected by flooding. Consequently, monitoring the natural water levels has become an essential task in our time. The continuous monitoring of groundwater level is uh, the great importance in the context of studying the natural environment. Unfortunately, since the start of the war in Donbass in 2014, Ukraine has been uh, facing a lack of opportunities for ongoing environmental monitoring in this territory for nine years. Due to significant portion of area of area being under occupation, access to reliable sources of information is limited. In such condition, remote sensing data can become the sole methods for monitoring the Donbass region. To achieve this, we turned uh, the availability uh, library of Landsat satellite imagery data, which uh, contains information dating back to 1950, to develop a methodology for assessing the flooding of the territory associated with uh, coal mine closure. One of the primary tools we employed uh, in our research was uh, spectral indices for measuring soil moisture, uh, also known as water indices. The objective of our research was to develop a methodology to assess the flooding of the territory associated with mine closure based on the utilization of satellite data. Our investigation aimed to establish a practical approach to using these images for evaluating the level of flooding and the impact of mine closure on an adjacent area. The main goal of our work was to develop um, some algorithms and processing methodologies for satellite imagery to detect and measure changes in terrain and soil indicative of flooding. Uh, satellite data were analyzed and interpreted to obtain objective results regarding to the state of territory flooding and uh, its dynamics. Our research findings can serve as a basis for developing effective management strategies and minimizing the consequences of flooding resulting from mine closure. During the development of the methodology, data related to the region of Donbass main interclinal were utilized. The slide presents a list of geological elements that were investigated, including the uh, scheme of replicative structure of Donbass. Uh, this uh, includes significant anticlinal, synclinals, as well as adjacent uplift and depressions, which are of uh, considerable importance for studying uh, geological processes in the region. Uh, we have a uh, major fault scheme. This scheme illustrated uh, the location of uh, crustal uh, fa fractures that uh, can shape the relief and influence hydrological processes. Digital elevation model or DAM, it represents a numerical representation of changes in height of the air surface and allow us uh, for the study of special variation in the terrain which can be associated with flooding processes and uh, topographic maps. 
this uh, maps provide detailed information about the landscape, including geomorphological features, uh, hydrological objects, and other geographical characteristics that help determine distribution of soil uh, moisture and uh, potential flood zones. For studying the research object, we utilized the uh, geological map with a scale of 1 uh, to 200,000 and uh, this uh, provides uh, detailed information about the geological formation and their distribution in the investigated area. Additionally, to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the object condition, we employed uh, Landsat satellite imagery. Uh, the utilized images have was generated by synthesizing the sphere near and red channels, which uh, has a special resolution of 30 meters, allowing for detailed data of the research area, including its uh, water resources, geomorphology, and uh, surface processes. The use of this data source enables us to obtain consolidated cartographic information about the geological feature and civilization appearance of the territory. During the research, we utilized uh, a mapping scheme, uh, which uh, called the map scheme of predicted depths of underground water levels. Uh, that uh, map uh, obtained um, was obtained based on numerical modeling of geofiltration. According to the work of Ulitsky, this map scheme illustrates the depths of underground, wa underground water levels, and uh, the maps include the following indicators. Uh, first, its uh, catchment area and geofiltration model area. Uh, from 2 to 5, its uh, level of uh, underground water. And uh, the second, its uh, level about 0 meters. Third, its level about uh, 1 to 3 meters. Uh, fourth, it's uh, from 5 to 10 meters. And uh, five, it's more than 10 meters. In our research, we utilized uh, data on the groundwater levels. It was level 2, approximately 0 meters, corresponding to the nearest underground water levels uh, to the surface, and level 5, more than 10 meters, representing the deepest water level uh, for the dry territory. To assess the possibility of using water indices as indicator of flooding in Donbass region, we compared the distribution of values of five known water indices within the territory with groundwater levels of approximately 0 meters and greater than 10 meters. The statistical kolmogorov smirnov uh, criterion was used uh, for the comparison of distribution. The result of comparison presented in the table. According to the obtained data, the most informative water indexes uh, for areas with forest vegetation and uh, areas with open ground was found uh, to be the uh, SW shortwave infrared index. For region with forest vegetation and open ground, this water index uh, has value uh, 20, 12 point three and twenty two point one Assessing flooding of the territory, we proposed uh, to use known as uh, moisture index, with, uh, which are established based on multiple satellite imagery. The analysis of the possibility of using of five moisture indices, it was disaster water stress indices, normalized different infrared indexes as W shortwave infrared index, uh, reclamation drought index and normalized water index. index. Uh, that uh, proved that uh, we could uh, use all of them to assess the flooding of territories. Comparing the distribution of the values of the specified indices within dry areas where the depth of groundwater is more profound than 10 meters and flooded areas where the depth of groundwater is uh, from 0 to 3 meters was performed using the well-known statistical criterion lambda uh, for kolmogorov smirnov as a result of comparison, it was established that all five water indices could be used uh, to select flooded areas. 
the ranking of humidification indices according to their capabilities, uh, which was based on the analysis of the value of lambda criterion, showed that um, SW indices uh, uh, characterized by the most significant capabilities, both for areas covered with uh, woody vegetation and uh, for areas with open ground. Therefore, the possibility of using of uh, remote sensing data uh, to assess the flooding of the territory of Donbass due to the mass closure of uh, coal mines, so to th the so-called wet conversation, has been established. And uh, thank you for attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and uh, the sound of the presentation is a bit quiet, but I hope the attendees uh, understood the minor sense of the resource and the, to the slides. And uh, who has questions? I have uh, one. Uh, two, two questions. <laughs> so thank you, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I am glad to see you. Uh, colleagues from NAS uh, of Ukraine uh, and uh, I question I have a question um, what uh, uh, what do you understand uh, by the term uh, satellite based technology mm -hmm. thank you for the question and um... Remote sensing methods allow us uh, investigation of uh, two uh, typical indicators of flooding processes, its uh, surface subsidence and uh, expansion of uh, moist soil areas, and of course uh, the emergence of groundwater of the surface. Uh, our application of term satellite technology involves uh, determining the moisture content of the surface bands based on remote sensing materials and uh, using water indices. The moisture content of uh, open soil directly corresponds to the goal of our research, while uh, the moisture content of vegetation serves as uh, indirect indicator of uh, soil moisture. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. And uh, um, and uh, can um, can this technology uh, by used uh, to determine uh, the level uh, of the water pollution in mines? Mm -hmm. uh, as for determine the water level in mines, uh, uh, using remote sensing is not possible. Uh, satellite imagery can help uh, assess the inundation of area associated with the mine closure and uh, we can uh, gate we can give uh, indicators of soil moisture related to the water level in mines uh, so the spectral indices and uh, image analysis uh, can be detected uh, Satellite technology can assist in assessing of inundation area and um, for precise determination of water level in mines, uh, we need a comprehensive approach uh, with uh, combining of different uh, sources on, of information and uh, research methods. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tatiana. Thank you. Andre, and now um okay uh next uh, presentation uh, on the topic um, impact of pesticide on the respiration of planoberius super spaces corneoses al allo spaces mollusca castropoda pulmonata plano breed from the Ukrainian Rio Network. And the uh, reporter is Yulia Ikonikova, please. Good day, everyone. My name is Yulia Ikonikova. I am postgraduate student at the Department of Zoology, Biological Monitoring and Natural Conservation of Zhutomir Ivan Franco State University. Also a source of the article are Olena Uvaeva and Tatiana Vakalyuk. 
Let me present you the main results of the study on the topic Impact of pesticides on the respiration of Planorbaria superspecies Corneus sensulata allospecies Mollusca gastropoda pulmonata planorbite from the Ukrainian river network. Pesticides now belong to the most widespread among artificially synthesized stable organic toxicant in Ukraine river network. Under improper use of pesticide, the danger arises for existence of the main water ecosystems, ecological links between water organisms are disturbed, their biodiversity is lost. To reveal the consequence of these toxins' impact on the water bodies and the inhabitants more and more often the experimental method of biotesting is used in water toxicology. As test object, one could use the animal highly sensitive to the action of these compounds and able to accumulate them in organism. The vicaristic genetic allospecies of Planorbaria superspecies Corneus sensulato, widespread in Ukraine river network, belong to such animals. Until now, there were no date of functioning of their respiration system under the impact of the most widespread pesticides. The aim of present study was to identify the feature of impact of three different widespread in Ukraine pesticides group, insecticides, fungicide, herbicide, in different concentration on the indexes of pulmonary and surface diffusive respiration in western and eastern planorbarius corneus insulato species and to estimate the availability of these molecules to be used as bioindicators for monitoring the state of surface waters under the pollution of used toxicants. Materials was presented by individuals of Planorbarius Corneus Sensulato, collected by hand in July-August of 2021 among then individual of western allus species from the Nila River, Vorodnitsa village, Ternopil region, and individuals of eastern allus species from Sel River, Sume Sume region. You can familiarize yourself with the methods used during our research on the slide. These are methods identified allus species acclimatized them to laboratory condition, the pilot and made experiments, indexes of pulmonary and surface diffusive respiration, and statistical processing of the obtained research results. As toxicants, we use the insecticide actor and fungicide scooted herbicide T2C in concentration 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 mg on liter. All species of Planorbarius cornus sensulato possess the bimodal respiration mood. The pulmonary respiration is performed by them via the periodical emergencies under the water surface tension film to take the air through pneumostome. The surface respiration is established due to the diffusive income of water salt oxygen in the mollusk blood through the epithelial body cover and adaptive heel of quite a large area. We established that pesticides in the concentration range from 10 to 50 mg on liter cause the repeat development of pathological process in Ramshore allo species. Under the 10 mg on liter concentration, obtain indexes of both pulmonary and surface respiration were close to those found in control group, which corresponds with a latent phase of intoxication. Under the concentration of mentioned pesticides of 20 to 30 mg on liter, the indexes of both respiration moods demonstrated the development of adaptive process in form of stimulation of all study indexes in study allo species, which increased which increasing of use toxicant 
concentration. This corresponds with the next phase of pathological process stimulation. Study molecules showed in the increase of daily number of inspiration and their duration by 1.1 times. We registered also the increase of the surface respiration indexes estimated by the survival rate without pulmonary respiration by 1.1 times. However, under the impact of higher toxicant concentration 40 and 50 mg on liter, the experimental molecules rapidly developing the depressive phase of intoxication process, which was caused by structural and functional damage of both the lung and cover epithelium. It was quickly replaced by sublethal and lethal phases. Comparing to the control group, experimental planorbarius corneal allospecies demonstrated the decrease of daily inspiration number by 1.3 times inspiration duration by 1.3, 1.4 times. Not worthy the survival of the study allospecies without ability to perform the pulmonary respiration decreased by 2.1 times. Changes in both respiration moods in studied mollusks were followed with manifestation of fast ecological and physiological responses reaction to toxic environment impact, avoiding of toxic environment is one of the first fast behavioral differences reaction which such mollus poses. The lethality of experimental mollus occurred due to the asphyxia and heart paralysis caused by intensive mucus production and destruction of the respiratory epithelium first in body covers, later in lung. Similar deteriorations usually occurred early and manifested brighter in Easter allospecie individuals. That may be considered as a consequence of this allospecies range being spread on the territories with higher climb drought comparing to those inhabited by western allospecies. Conclusion the indexes of pulmonary and surface diffusive respiration in Planorbarius corneus sensoriata allospecies shows the clear dependence on the environmental pesticide concentration. Toxic resistance of eastern allospecies to the used toxicant appeared lower than in western allospecies, that why the first appeared more sensitive and less endurance to the impact of used toxic agent. Allospecies of Ramsor can be recommended for use in the system of ecological monitoring as indicator species as the I functions the indexes of pulmonary and surface respiration should be considered. Thank you for attention. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe some has a questions. Please. Um, Elena Joe, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, Anastasia. Uh, uh, Olena or Anastasia? <laughs> um, I am Olena Zhuk and I want to... Okay, okay, because I, ha I see that Anastasia raised her hand. Okay, I can uh, wait. Okay, please uh, Okay, thank you. Uh, as I understand, your research was um, conducted in the Ternopil and Sumy region of Ukraine and in July and August 2021. 
So my question, um, would be the results be significantly different if you took Molesk in other territories of Ukraine during this period? Uh, I'm sorry, but can you help me with the translation? Okay. Як я зрозуміла, ваші дослідження були проводились в Тернопільській та Сумській областях України в період липень-серпень 2021 року. Чи будуть сильно відрізнятися результати, якби ви брали молюски на інших територіях України саме в цей період, ну також липень-серпень 2021-го? Can you answer in Ukrainian? Okay. Можу я відповісти на українській мові? Окей, пліз. Я перепрошую, можна тільки повільно, щоб речення ви і речення Анастасія спробує перекласти, добре? Добре. Давайте так спробуємо. Добре. Так, дійсно, матеріал для дослідження, яке ви сьогодні прослухали, було зібрано у 2021 році, тому що, я поясню це так, Мої експериментальні дослідження, вони проводились дійсно раніше, але у нас зазвичай робиться повторне дослідження, тобто ми не орієнтуємося на єдину експериментальну частину з однієї точки. Ні, по Тернопилю у нас також є матеріал дослідження, який зібраний пізніше. І це вже інша проба по такому ж самому дослідженню. Тут вона не подана, але вона є. І я скажу так, що дані, які ми отримали, вони майже ідентичні до того, що отримано у 2021 році. Тобто є дослідження, які проводилися у 2022, вибачте, будь ласка, і у 2021. Вони схожі. І збір матеріалу відбувався у різні періоди, і це не суттєво впливає на результати, які ми отримали. Тобто, Фазний патологічний процес, який відбувається у молюсків за дії використаних пестицидів, він характерний як для молюсків, які зібрані в 2021 році, в липні-серпні, так і ті, які були зібрані у 2022-му, але вже у вересні. Тому різниці, як такої, немає. Тобто наше повторне наше дослідження, воно лише підтверджує результати, які ви сьогодні могли спостерігати. Ну, у мене трішки питання було про інше, чи відрізняються, будуть результати, якщо ви візьмете з інших територій, тобто не з Тернопільської чи Сумської регіону, а саме з інших. Результати, звичайно, будуть відрізнятися, але не у великій мірі, але сама статистика цих даних, вона буде схожа. Тобто аловид західний буде в будь-якому випадку відрізнятися від аловиду східного, незважаючи на те, з якого місця біотопу був зібраний матеріал. Все одно в будь-яких експериментальних частинах, які ми проводили, Ось у порівнянні східний аловит був менш витривалим. Тобто це підтверджувалося не один раз, і тому я вам певно кажу, що суттєвої відмінності немає, але в показниках так, можуть бути. Це може бути на один або на два вдиха більше. Ось таким чином може бути різниця. Spotsman said that results in other turtles will not different. It may be a little bit. Можете, будь ласка, повторити щодо західного, що не будуть вирізнятися західні та східні? Ні, в ніякому разі вони будуть однозначно відрізнятися лише у отриманих показниках, але статистика процесів, тобто те, що ми бачимо в результаті, вона буде ідентична. Тобто східний аловит у будь-якому випадку буде менш витриваліший, ніж західний аловит. Окей, so in statistic, our result will be same. About West 
I don't remember. <laughs> uh, як називається східні алотит? Аловиди, алоспісіс. А, алов... А, алос, э, вест, алос, э, will be um, continuous, uh, that is, is uh, eastern. So, that's all. I think it's very difficult to translate because answer is so big and so deeply <laughs> and uh, uh, have very uh, specific words. <laughs> so... Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe some more questions, please. Can I ask? <laughs> Sorry. Please, please, uh, please uh, Elena. Okay. Uh, thank you for your, for your deep work. And uh, I have some, uh, maybe, um, uh, I missed uh, this uh, material in your presentation, but I want to ask you, why did you choose uh, such problem for your research and why the impact uh, of pesticides on these species of uh, hydropions is uh, uh, important for research? Maybe you was, uh, maybe it was noticed some decrease in their population or something else. I can translate as uh, translate the question if you need. <laughs> Я хочу запитати ну, мене таке доволі загальне питання, так як можливо це для мене чужа тема. Чому була обрана саме така тема досліджень? Чому дослідження впливу пестицидів на ці види гідробіонтів є важливим? Тобто, у чому чому саме ви зорієнтувалися, не сконцентрувалися на цьому? Дякую за запитання. Так, хочу сказати, що у межах нашої країни однією з екологічних проблем наразі є це забруднення поверхневих вод України саме такими одними із найпоширенішими токсикантами – це пестицидами. І тому ця тема була обрана недаремно. Ми хочемо своїм дослідженням внести такий вклад у моніторинг водних об'єктів, тому що молюски, вони визнані як у нас в Україні, так і в Європі, це види біоіндикатори, тобто їх можна використовувати для того, щоб визначати рівень тих чи інших полютантів, які знаходяться у водному середовищі. І саме нашим дослідженням ми хотіли переконатись, чи можемо ми використовувати аловиди витужки рогової в якості біоіндикаторів. І це дійсно підтвердилося нами, тому що різниця у Варіація у показниках свідчила про те, що пестициди все-таки мають вплив на наших гідробіонтів, і тому ми можемо використовувати їх у вигляді біоіндикаторів, а за функціями мішенями, по яких можна визначати, це будуть показники як поверхневого, так і легеневого дихання. Я ще б хотіла б сказати, що у нас не лише пестициди – це найпоширеніші токсиканти. Якщо ви зможете знайти мої публікації, які вже поширені в мережі інтернету або в інших журналах, то ви можете переконати, що не лише пестициди – це найпоширеніші токсиканти. У нас так само є дослідження і по мінеральних добривах, і онних важких металів та поверхневоактивних речовин. Тому ми хочемо свій Несок зробити все ж таки у моніторинг нашої країни. Дякую. Я зрозуміла, дуже дякую. Thank you for your answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you for questions and answers. And uh, I think uh, we move on, on to the next presentation. And uh, please, the next presentation on the topic uh environmental safety of soil genetic horizons in the impact zone of Lviv city landfill ukraine uh and uh, please vasil popovich presentation hello my name is vasil popovich the topic of my report is this environmental safety of Swill genetic horizon is the impact zone of Lviv city, Ukraine. The Dovotop has a significant influence of the development of phytocenosis. The depending of its physiochemical, mechanical, and acidic properties, vegetation in landfill develops in different ways. In the impact zone of technogenic landscape, there is an anchor set uh, background and 
and increased activity of radionuclid in the photo. Numerous studies of the photo of the Knigneko and Reben concluded in Ukraine, Uzbek, made a significant contribution to the development of the study of the Knigneko and the photo. Together with his so author, he investigated the uh, peculiarities of in the condition of technozam of the Dnieper step. According to Uzbek, in the technogenic landscape, the dopotop is a man made uh, speciality limited bio system that is in constant development and influence in seal formation. Physical chemical investigation of the dopotop of Swil Gorizon within is the impact zone of the new city landfill were carried out according to the state standard of Ukraine. The content of uh, mobile form of heavy metal in the photo was determined. Mobile form of copper, zinc, cobalt were determined with the rings method lead, cadmium with the atomic absorption method. They were outwitted with the state standard. For investigation of the influence and fields hazard factor of the formation of the swill profile. The seal profile cuts were made from which mixed swills were selected according to genetic horizon. Mycological and agrochemical analysis were carried out as well as analyzed for the content of nutritionals, minerals, heavy metals, and toxic elements. The profile number one is located within a radius of two kilometers east of the foot. The land belongs to the Dubliani City Council of the Lviv District, Lviv region. When describing uh, the deep petland, it was found that the content of heavy metals in the surface level uh, T1 significantly exceeded the indicator in the genetic horizon T2. The indicators of uh, copper, zinc, and lead in this horizon do not accept permissible concentrations. <coughs> Cadmium sulfate is the basis of yellow paints, usually painting, textile production, and swap making. Cadmium selenite is used as a red dew. Cadmium is also used in semiconductor materials, cryogenic technology, lead cadmium and mercury cadmium elements of battery and corrosion metal quality. Uh, when describing swill profile number two, it was found that the swill is short, shallow, light, lamely and open. The profile is made on the western side of the Lviv landfill a distance of 20 meters from the road that led to uh, to the village Zberanka. The swill forming and underlying rock is lost one. Genetic horizon HGN and PHN were revealed. Uh, one of the uh, most uh, opportunistic and toxin products from Spergalis fumigatus. Uh, the score is in this wheel profile. This micromycet can cause uh, mycosis and mycotoxosis in living organisms, humans, animals. The study of Turk's wheel profile uh, free format in condition of moistening of the territory showed that has a slightly different physical chemical parameters. The name of this wheel, which medical composition the field suit, depth, uh, clay, medium, long, light. It was formed on uh, diluvial sediments. The quad is laid uh, 100 meters east of the foot of the landfill and 70 meters perpendicular to the road to it. Consistent of my forest cobalt, cadmium, and uh, mercury and Christ with depth. Uh, but do not accept the MC, MPC, the accumulation of heavy metal in the genetic horizon PHG indicates the latching to the parent rock. Uh, 
else will in the area affected by the landfill area characterized as very poor in micromycet distribution. The taxonomic composition of allele fungi and the ecological and biological characteristic of the identified species indicates significant pollution of the ecosystem due Hasehal was. Okay, thank you. Thank you for presentation. And the, uh, I know that the uh, average formation of solid waste in the world is from one to three per capita per, per day. And uh, the problem of the collection, sorting, uh, and um, processing of solid waste is extremely relevant of Ukraine for Ukraine as well and for each settlement separately and that's why I have a number of questions um uh, please um one of them is uh, whether environmental monitoring of the state of atmospheric air and the groundwater pollution from this landfill was carried out and if so please tell us briefly about these results uh, thank you for your questions uh, yes uh, we monitored atmospheric air and will uh, pollution is a zone influence of the Lviv city landfills. Uh, it was established that uh, the radiation background uh, of the landfill exceeds the uh, permissible norm of every uh, uh, surface and underground water research uh, was carried uh, out of um, previous synthesis. It has been established that toxic substance enter uh, aquifers. Is, um, uh -huh. okay. Ex uh, explore is uh, Lviv city landfill is big problem in city environmental safety. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you for your answer. And I have next question. Uh, did you compare the obtained results with the results of other scientists who studied this landfill before you? Uh, scientists is uh, Malovani, Petrushka, Gernik, uh, at our uh, investigation, uh, an author carried over research on the Lviv city field. The student took into account the study of landfill leachate, soil, and air pollution. Uh, however, genetic horizons were not uh, considered in their scientific. Uh, okay, thank you. And last question. Last questions, please. Um, did you evaluate the impact of the objects in soil horizons located at the distance of 500 meters or one kilometers? And if there were such studies, how did you and how you, did you get these results? And uh, are they field studies or simulation results? Uh, okay. Uh... Toxic substance spread into the soil horizon uh, at a distance of uh, the city landfill, uh, one kilometer from the foot of the landfill. Research. Based on the obtained result regarding uh, the content of heavy metal soil and uh, waters and uh, filtrates, and which it we modeled the, the heat of pollutants using various uh, computer programs it was established uh, that it's not recommended uh, to use water for human needs which are radius one kilometers from the landfill due to its contamination uh, thank you uh, thank you uh, and um, if no questions uh, I start uh, to present uh, 
next uh, presentation. Uh, okay, next presentation um, topic is the management of transformed small river basins of Lynn Policia, Bunyo River case study. Uh, please, Olena Zhuk uh, presented, uh, is present to this presentation. Dear colleagues, let me introduce our work on topic the management of transport small river basins of Polin Polincia, Bunyev River case study. Today it is important to use methodological approaches to protect, preserve, and restore the surface waters of the small river basins. From this position, we decided to devote our research to development of methodology elements of managing transport basins of the small rivers of Bolin Polincia. To achieve this goal, we performed the following tasks carried out on site investigation and instrumental studies of the Bunim River Basin, assess the ecological stability of the landscape, determine the hydrological and morphological features of the river, assess the quality of the river's surface water and bottom deposits, develop the management solution to achieve a good state of surface water quality. In our opinion, it is extremely important to develop and implement a joint program for reverse monitoring and to apply a proof methodology for effective integrated water resource management of the transport rivers of Falling Police. This includes the assessment of the ecological state of river basins using GIS technologies, determining the environmental goals to achieve a good state of water quality, developing compensatory water protection measures, developing the design and estimate documentation if necessary, the organizational tools for addressing water uses, all interested parties, state authorities and local self-government bodies, etc. Along with these important and topical issues is the need to ensure the flood safety of river and territories of the police zone, as well as adapting to climate changes. The flood safety of river and territories of the police zone is exactly the problem that arose in the basin of small rivers in the areas of Olympia Police after the flood on May 17, 2019. The most affected locations were those belonging to the basin of the Bunyip River. The Bunyip River Basin is typical for the bottom part of Wallin Police. There are a significant anthropogenic trans transformation of the natural landscapes. A significant part of the water courses of the Bunyip River Basin were once directed and transformed into main canals of the meliorating system. There is an increase in anthropogenic load on the river basin due to the overregulation of river flow, floodplain development, changes in morphological parameters, flooding of the territory, and so on. The changes in the structure and the water body's functioning parameters are a consequence of the manifestation of transformation and degradation processes that develop under the influence of natural and anthropogenic factors. These factors pose a danger of aquatic ecosystem and the population and engineering infrastructure in basin area. One of the main features of the Bunyip River Basin, like of the most small, small river, is the insufficient density of the monetary system for registering extreme precipitation in its basin. After the destroying flood in 2019, we decided to investigate the real ecological state of the Bunyip River and its basin. For this purpose, we used methods included on site investigations, laboratory and analytical studies, data processing using GIS technologies. A topographic survey on the Buni River floodplain within the most affected part of Rapitni village. The on site investigation included field surveys and water samples at four control sites on the Buni River for 13 quality indicators. A full scale survey uh, of individual sections of the river catchment area was carried out using an unnamed aerial vehicle. The chemical and analytical quality control of the Bonnie River surface water was carried out according to regulatory requirements in the Certified Laboratory of Water Quality at the National University of Water and Environmental Engineering in Vivian City. The instrumental studies were determined, uh, determined as a sampling site using certified mobile devices. The mixed samples were used for the further laboratory study and clarification with a radiological study of the bottom deposit composition. A total of three samples of bottom deposits in the Bunim River and two samples in the reservoirs were collected. The analysis of the constructed longitudinal profile along the river axis allowed dividing the study into five sections. The section of in the investigated river basin differ by character of bottom deposit formation, by the shape of the riverbed, carrying and transport capacity, by the hydraulic slope, etc. 
The fourth and fifth sections presented by reservoirs with the lack of proper regulation of water discharge affected the state of flooding in Lukitna during the flood on May 17, 2019. The impact of existing engineering infrastructure on the formation of flood zones. The maximum flow rate was calculated through the opening of the road bridge, indicated by the error in figure, uh, for the flood conditions on May 17, 2019. This corresponds to a provision of 3%, that is, one time in 30 years. These floods can occur in the summer. The causes of flood are laying on uncontrolled and untreated surface runoff flows from the residential uh, areas of the Bunif River and accordingly to the reservoirs in Rukitne. Uh, most often, they are uh, they're formed after heavy rains or during the melting of snow cow. A significant part of the household of uh, Rukitne are located uh, in the floodplain of the river in the zone uh, of possible territory flooding during floods and inundations. Such situation occurred on May 2090 as a result of great precipitation. There was a rapid rise in water levels, which led to the flooding of residential buildings, including the threat of the destruction of the pressure front structures uh, at the recreational reservoir in the village of Rokitna region. The heavy rain on May 16, 2090, which lasted about 10 hours, led to the flooding of 378 households located on the border territories of the Sarnian district in the Rhine region, as well as the different infrastructure facilities. The most affected location were those belonging to the basin of the Bunyu River. On these photos, we can see what damage was caused to the population and to the infrastructure of the region. On this slide, we presented the more remote sensing data that illustrates the, how the water surface area of the Buni River was changing during the four days from May 16 till May 19 in 2019, when the flood occurred. The analysis results of the chemical element content in the bottom deposits of the studied section indicated the presence of all studied elements. The source of anthropogenic entry of heavy metals into water bodies is primarily associated with road transport and uh, wastewater, including natural causes such as the decomposition of dead hydrobions. On the diagram, we can see the difference between the results in four sample points. The contents uh, of heavy metals gradually decreases from uh, first to fourth point. The surface water quality assessment shows that the overall ecological state of the surface water of the studied aquatic ecosystem is assessed as unsatisfactory. The block of trophoseprobiological indicators is dominant and determines the water quality. At the same time, its deviation from the environmental status is primarily caused by the biogenic elements of the nitrogen group and phosphates. Due to all above mentioned factors and issues, the necessity of the improved monitoring system within the river basin is arising. The basic model of monitoring the condition of the Buni River and its objectives can be presented by the steps on the slide. The introduction of public environmental monitoring can be a significant addition to the current system of water monitoring. This will increase the availability of environmental information for all stakeholders, quickly obtain the necessary data in the event of emergency extension as well as current regular monitoring of the impact of water users on the ecological state of the rivers. Local public organization in the framework of public monitoring should perform the following functions. Monitoring objects that are not included in state monitoring programs, implementing environmental control and notification of accidents and emergencies, developing environmental education and awareness, Evaluating the environmental impact of projects for plant activities within river basins, etc. For the effective management uh, of river basins, it is necessary to create a basic council. The main task for of which will be to develop, coordinate, and approve the river, uh, river basin management plans. As a result of our research, we can propose such solutions for flood management and prevention of the damages such as occurred on May 2019. To develop and implement the river basin management plans, which include a water protection measures. To develop and implement a joint program for public monitoring of the small rivers. To implement the following compensatory hydraulic measures, such as a periodic clearing of the riverbed section adjacent to the bridge um, from the deposits coming from the upper section. 
reducing the resistance of water flow uh, at culverts and reservoirs, creating flood corridors by arranging either appropriate cross regulators or laying pipeline structures uh, that have a current capacity at a safe uh, level for recognized flow rates. Two reservoirs, which are situated in the investigated part of Bodhi Basin, require development regulatory rules that provide for the level of water response dependent on the current meteorological situation. Thus, if the amount of precipitation in three days reaches 20 mm, it is a signal to work with both reservoirs in order to overcome flooding. Thank you for your attention. And one of the things to remember, water resources are an integral part of the ecosystem and play a crucial role in the socio-ecological and economic development of territories. Thank you, Olena. Maybe some questions. Okay, I have a question, but, um, maybe uh, we know that studies of the uh, conduction of the river network are extremely important. And, and I have next question. Have you complete, uh, compared the obtained results with retrospective da data? For example, 40, 50 years ago, other significant differences? Uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, we have um, compared um, the tent results with retrospective data, and uh, we have indicated that uh, anthropogenic transformation of the natural landscapes uh, significantly uh, decreased. And a significant part of the um, water crosses of the Buniv River Basin was uh, once directed and uh, transformed into main canals, as it was mentioned in the, on the presentation. And um, it, these uh, call these um, such uh, changes uh, in, in um, as uh, overregulation of river flow, floodplain development, changes in morphological perimeter, and uh, flooding of the territory. Thank you. Okay. And have you developed any recommendation to improve the current situation in Bunia River Basin? Maybe you have some implementations? Uh, thank you. Yes, I can say that uh, to develop recommendation, it was one of the main tasks of our study of our research um, due to the damages uh, that uh, flood uh, caused. And uh, this uh, recommendation uh, was um, to develop and to implement uh, the um, management plan for the reservoirs of uh, Buni River Basin, uh, dependent on the meteorological situation in the river. And also, it was uh, the recommendation to improve the monitoring uh, system in the uh, river basin because. Um, Monitoring is a tool to assess and uh, to predict the situation in the uh, basin and, to, uh, of course, to prevent uh, the damage. Uh, also, the uh, other recommendation, uh, organization, uh, organizational recommendation was to create um, a basin council uh, whose uh, main task uh, will uh, to develop, coordinate and approve the river basin management plans. Also, we uh, give um, some uh, technological uh, recommendations, such as a um, periodic uh, clearing of the riverbed from the deposits on a, a critical section of the river, and uh, to reduce uh, the resistance of water flow at culverts and uh, reservoirs um, uh, by the creation of uh, flood corridors. Uh, also, we um, uh, Mm, indicate a such uh, signal point um, to work with uh, water in the reservoirs. It's um, when uh, the amount of precipitation in three days reach, uh, reaches uh, 20 millimeters, then it is already advisable to clear the river valley to prepare the households for high water levels and to work with both reservoirs in order to overcome flooding. Thank you. Okay, and we know that floods have a significant negative impact. And uh, have you done flood forecasting on this river? 
if so what math and software tools did you use um unfortunately the development of uh, some predictive models wasn't uh, a part of our task in this uh, study but it's a good um, um goal for for the further investigation and the, because the purpose of uh, our research was to develop some method, uh, methodological approaches to protect, preserve, and to restore the surface water of the small rivers in case study of Buni River. Thank you very much. Okay. And maybe some more questions, please. Okay. If no que questions, uh, dear colleagues, we'll listen it to all the reports and today um, important environmental problems uh, were considered and uh, ways to solve them were proposed and uh, a number of questions related to the consequences of military uh, actions and other problems don't depend on the exciting military situation, but may be uh, complicated by it. And it's very important now to accumulate attention to the state of the environmental and um, its preventions. Therefore, thank you all very much for participants in this section. The conference will continue for two more days. And you can find all detailed information in our conference website. Uh, and we invite you to participate in our next events. And um, i happy to see all of us uh, all together and, uh, and goodbye. <laughs> Okay, Goodbye. this, this Thank you. section. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure. Unfortunately, I had to leave for another meeting in between, but uh, I think it is good that uh, you are progressing uh, and what you have presented. I'm very impressed. So, thank you, Jacqueline, to everyone. <laughs> thank you very much, thank you, thank all you. participants. Okay. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Dobro pagine.